Hello, everybody, and welcome to Reaction Shots. I am your host, yes, Brandon Jones. Yes, I'm hosting this one. I have no idea what I'm doing. Michael Huber over here. Give him a break. Give him a break. <laughs> And we are here to talk about something, uh, you know, Ian floated the idea, you know, Ian's, Ian's not here to host or star in this episode, but uh, he floated a lot of different ideas. One that I was ashamed of, actually, is, and I think you said that too, you're like, oh, let's do Disney movies. Yeah. And I'm like, believe it or not, I'm actually not that well versed in Disney movies. I saw kind of funny, like, arguing over, like, the Disney Channel, like, you know, afternoon shows, which was the best one. And it's like, I haven't seen any of that stuff. What like, are like your Goof thoughts? Troop, like, not well versed. What are your thoughts on The Great Mouse Detective? Uh, Grace Mouse Detective is great. Grace Mouse Detective is is one of those that people I like. I, I think a lot of people forget it's is is um, Disney. Uh, that that's one is like. See, here's the thing about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> if they rock some Grace Ma some Great Mouse Detective, mm -hmm. we might we might be talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If we get a little Oliver and Company in there, you know what I mean? If they dig deep, <laughs> then like okay. <laughs> Like Maleficent's in it, but like there's not a lot of exploration of Snow White or Sleeping Beauty, or there's a lot of like Mickey love, you yeah. know, like Steamboat Willie and stuff. But like, yeah. Anyway, tangent. Anyway. Well, there's that. That's kind of an adaptation, yeah, you know. Like it is. we might get into Kingdom Hearts <laughs> later on. Today's episode is about adaptations through the lens of Game of Thrones, which is, I think, doing something that I've never seen television do before in terms of adaptation. And I'm going to make. A very bold statement that I'm I'm ready for this to be shot down okay. because I'm trying Hot to takes. I'm trying to make sense of this in my own brain. Yeah, but I I remember what I was doing. I was in the shower driving down the street, and I'm like, this is the best adaptation ever, Game of Thrones. And I was like, no, it can't be. And like the other, you know, like the demon on my shoulders, like, well, think about it. Like, what? I mean, it's it's exciting too because we're also getting into Infinity War, which uh, you know we'll talk about later. And for everyone concerned about spoilers, I want to I want to be surgical with not spoiling anything. Yeah. Uh, we have both seen all of Game of Thrones. I'm here yeah. to talk about just kind of the art of adaptation and like yeah. how difficult that is, how how difficult it is to please fans, how it's almost impossible. Like you yeah. can't make everybody happy. So like, yeah. what's what, what what approach do you do? You know, how do you go at it? Totally. Um, but more specifically, like, uh, uh, so yeah, so no, no uh, Avengers spoilers, no uh, Game of Thrones spoilers until the very end. There's one thing I specifically, Huber asked me a question beforehand, and there's like a couple things I want to say, uh, because even though we're both caught up on the show, I have read all the books as well. Yeah. And so uh, I have all sorts of crazy ideas, even though we are way past the books now with the show. Uh, we've left all of that behind. Yeah. Um, but uh it, I think because one of the biggest things about adaptation for me is time. And yeah. it seems to be like the the greatest enemy because you're either dealing with... You gotta cut stuff. You're either dealing with a tell... It, like the most... Because we're, we're, this is a film podcast. We were talking about film and yeah. every other medium you can adapt something from always has more time. Mm -hmm. Television has more episodes. Books are way longer to read and are always way more expansive. There's no... Yeah. I think the only the only adaptation of a book of a that I consider the movie better is Misery, actually with Stephen King. Because nice. that when I read that book, I was like, that was Misery. crazy. Dude, Where when I saw the movie, I was like, see, that was perfect. Like that was just enough fear, just enough tension. The book kind of went yeah. off the rails, I thought, a little bit. Yeah. It was one of my favorite Stephen <laughs> King books. But um uh and I just think, uh, and, and comic books, Watchmen was a classic example. I remember that got attempted it's so many times. One. And a, a favorite adaptation? It's my favorite. Uh, Solid Snake coming in for the win. I'm actually yeah. a big fan of, yeah. we can we can maybe talk about some of the changes that they made to that. Yeah, definitely hang on, hang on to that one, Huber. Um, but it's just always a matter of, we don't have the time. You yeah. know, like we have to abridge this somewhat. So then what do we do? And I kind of want to, we have uh, questions that uh, Ian posted here on patreon.com cool. slash easy allies, where you can go if you would like to be a part of Reaction Shots. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we have uh, over 20 comments we will be going back to uh, periodically. But I just want to talk for a second about, about like those greatest challenges. So yeah. like one is casting. You know, like you have to basically tell the audience, no, that this, this person, yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. uh, uh, Peter Dinklage is Tyrion Lannister. Emma Watson is Hermione. <laughs> Deal with it. You yeah. know, and actually Amanda, who's a huge uh, and this will come up and apologize to put words in my wife's mouth. But like not a big fan of those movies. She has a lot of issues oh. with how the, that's portrayal. Oh. And Emma Watson is is a huge one. Definitely. Because in the. Yeah. She looks different in the book. As long as sure. we brought up Tyrion Lannister, it's kind of the same issue that I have with Tyrion Lannister. I love I loved Peter Dinklage on that show. Love him. Love him, love him, love him, love him, love him. I want more, 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 more. Yeah. But if I'm going to be completely honest, he is very different from the Tyrion presented in the books because, uh, and I think the Tyrion in the books edges out his portrayal, not his performance, not the actor, not what he's brought to the show, but just 
what that means to be that character because Dinklage is a, is a fine looking human being. You yeah. know, like he's a very charming, very sexy man. Yeah. And uh, Tyrion is not. <laughs> you know, like very, very much not so. He's he's like people call him like goblin. They call him imp. You know, like yeah. for a reason. Like you see like art done. I think there's like a trading. Uh, I don't know if it's. I believe it's official from the books of Song of Ice and Fire. But there's like uh, if you go to the wiki, a lot of the art is is taken he from like, posters that they created. And yeah, and uh, he achieves battle scars throughout, as you're familiar with with the show, that uh, are much more intense in the books, as is pretty much everything else. Also, another interesting thing about the books that I don't think spoils anything, any of the young characters uh, subtract about five years from their age across the board. Got it. <laughs> Daenerys, John, Arya, everybody. Like, okay. and so that was really interesting with the showrunners. Where they're like, "Yeah, we can't. Yeah, <laughs> I can't let's age him up. I can't have John be like fifteen. No. Like, no, no, no." no. Um, so yeah, so there's that issue, and it just seems like a losing battle. It seems like there's no way because you have to bring in a casting person. Yeah, you have to bring in people casting the X Men. It's like, oh, you know, it's like I have my issues with, yeah. you know, Halle Berry is Storm and all this nonsense. Hugh Jackman though. He, well, yeah, but that's the same kind of thing. Where it's like, he's very attractive. And to me, Wolverine's not a handsome man. You know, like he's very tall. Wolverine's not it's a tall true, guy, true, you know, true. like, and so it's, it, I run into these issues. Yeah, we talked about this before. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I've had the community beat me up, but like we have these issues of, um, uh, you know, obviously people have to be pretty to be in, you know, to be in a film, to sell tickets. Um, but what are some of you, like what, what uh, you're, you're a fan of talking about things you very much enjoy. Any casting that really upset you? Anything that, Really irked you over the years? Uh, no. No? Nothing no. in the Marvel Universe or nothing? No. Okay. No, wow. honestly. Wow. Like when Heath Ledger came out as uh, Joker, you know, that was all controversial, but I'm, I don't like judging something too harshly before right. I see it. My, my so love of like, Ledger's Joker has grown and yeah. grown and grown as I've seen that movie more and more and more. Yeah, so. Because the dialogue is so good. Obviously, I was like, hmm, that's an interesting choice. That's yeah. weird, but like, let's see what happens. Cause like Batman Begins was a 10 out of 10. So right. I was like, okay, but the Batman with Begins was amazing. Yeah. I have full confidence. Which brings us to another point. Actually, it's a very nice segue there, Michael Huber into the idea of having the right expectations and being in that mindset, mm -hmm. because that's where I try to be. And I think that's where you need to be for adaptation is yeah. this looks weird. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. It doesn't mean that I might enjoy <laughs> this or not, but like even as a Batman fan, going back to like Batman forever and Batman and Robin, like there's stuff there. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's joy there, you know, totally like, Jones there's dude, a reason, goes for it. but I got to know who am I going to watch it with? <laughs> yeah. Under what conditions? Yeah. How much am I going to be focused on this film? It's and true. so, it's so true. And so it's interesting. And that, and that kind of, uh, and not to, we just had the discussion of less reaction shots. I'll give you a very abridged version, but I was not a huge fan of Batman year one, the animated adaptation, because it was very truthful to the books. And that kind of shook my brain up a little bit where I was like, Whoa, okay, so what, and, and maybe this is kind of, I think, uh, the, the, a, a pivotal discussion topic to this episode is yeah. um, how, what's like a percentage or a degree, I guess, or a pie chart of yeah. like how much you you should do the book to the letter. Yeah. If you have a scene, what lines of dialogue are key versus mm -hmm. How much do I want you to enjoy? Oh, that was interesting. Oh, that was unexpected. Yeah. You surprised me with that. How much do you want to be surprised as a fan going into something? Um, It depends. Like, if it's a comic book adaptation, I think because there's, like, pictures already. Right. You know? 300 style. 300, like, yeah. 300 is, like, almost page for page. The dude's falling off the cliff. is like, yeah. it does something to you, like. Yeah. So, I think, you know, Zack Snyder's, like, flair there. Right was really awesome. Like I've gone back and I've watched 300 like kind of recently and it didn't hold up as well as back then. Um, but like bringing up Watchmen, I love the change at the end that they made. I like it more than the comic book actually. Uh, yeah, I, I love it. And it's like the movie is a lot of one for one with the comic book yeah. until you get to the end and they have that twist. Yeah. And I just like it so much more. It just hits me harder so it's yeah again we're the, the minefield of spoiler territory so i don't yeah. specifically say what happened but yeah. i think for those that have seen watchmen what i think that achieves and it's what was really interesting is if you were to do the movie version in a comic book you'd be like oh that kind of was weird that yeah. kind of didn't seem because the watchman the comic book is also a lot goofier yeah. than the movie like there's a lot of commentary of the the time period and um there's a lot of like uh, extra news flashes mm -hmm. and uh, other characters that like in a film you'd be like wait what happened to that guy an hour ago but in a comic book you don't really think about it because it's just like everything's new i can if i need i can just flip back to the old page and be like who's that guy oh yeah, god totally. uh and so in the end like you in the comic book you don't really see a lot 
lot of it. They, it's very selective with what frames of specifically yeah. how I'm showing you this stuff. Whereas if they had unleashed that comic book ending in the film, I think you would laugh at it. I think yeah. you'd be like, what? And you know, these comic book fans would be like, it's serious, damn it. Like, yeah, yeah. This is a really important moment. Yeah. But like they, they found this, you know, Hater found this really interesting loophole of like, what if we kind of turn the whole thing around? And then that's something that you can see in the actor's faces. You can see the fallout of, you know, these, how this is affecting emotionally all of these people because you can't see, I got to take a snapshot in the comic book. I can't really explore it that much unless I blow it up full page and or really zoom in on somebody. Yeah. And so that I think was initially I was like, what? Why? Why yeah. change it? It doesn't make no sense. It's yeah. like, ah, because it is ultimately a different medium. Love it. And maybe before we get into specific <laughs> questions, like what is it to you about the film medium that is a plus and a minus in terms of adapting something that was that was literary or in a TV show, like Starsky and Hutch or something? It's Miami Vice, which it's, I had never seen until yeah. very recently. I saw Miami Vice like a month ago. Oh Miami my gosh. Vice. I had the so craziest. <laughs> I, that was the craziest so movie experience serious. I've ever had, Jones. <laughs> we went to Miami Vice for my friend's birthday, and like 10 of us went to go see Miami Vice out of control. <laughs> We're out of control. Yeah. That was a, they yeah. made some decisions for that movie. Yeah. The camera work and something like, whoa. Uh, it's pros and cons for both, obviously. I think movies can be more focused, you know? They can mm. trim some things and just kind of get in there, tell the main story arc and get out. Whereas, you know, Game of Thrones is is a commitment. You get more right. time to develop things. And they it's crazy too, because Game of Thrones, you know, you look at it by how many hours it is, they're still missing plot lines. Oh, tons you know? of stuff. So tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. So it's like even if you have that much length mm -hmm. and that many that much time and, and episodes, you're still gonna be missing things. So yeah, it, it's tough. I, I like you know, I go to Harry I think Harry Potter is like the best adaptation, controversially, I guess. Cool. You know, it is cool. That is a touchy subject. I'm I not know. here to shoot down yeah. opinions. I'm here to. I think here to, you know to, to, to talk about adaptation before the age of the MCU now, where like now everything is under a microscope. Like, oh, let's connect all these frames. Let's yeah. connect everything. Like Harry Potter did a damn good job at adapting all these books. Yeah. Uh, you know, with with the situations and the different directors, oh, and different just, Dumbledores. What a different heartbreak. Dumbledores. You know, like. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think, yeah, I, I, I like adaptations when it's like movie franchises. So like yeah. Lord of the Rings, you know, Harry uh, Potter. Favorite Harry Potter film? Film has got to be Prisoner of Azkaban. It's got to be, 100%. Prisoner of Azkaban. That is the but, right answer. <laughs> but I really enjoy Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire is fun. It's uh, so anime, dude. It's an anime arc. That's what it is. Like, Amanda tournament? Hates, Amanda hates when Vol uh, when uh, 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 Dumbledore like freaks out on Harry. He gets like angry. He's like, yeah. did you put your name in there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best. The, the book passage, Dumbledore says quietly. It's like, but like a dumb, uh, this is it, man. I'm, I'm going to make an executive call that this is not a big spoiler. But like uh, uh, Neville does something to help Harry. Yeah. There's a scene where Neville's like, hey, Harry, yeah. help. Yeah. Uh, that's Dobby in the book. Yeah. So it's like, there's an interesting thing. Interesting that, like, I guess, it's saving money. It's like, oh, we got to yeah. CG the that whole, guy. The whole if we could have arc. the character of Neville on, you know, like that would be cheaper, yeah. uh, which is something that I want to specifically talk about Game of Thrones that I think is interesting. And then we'll start getting into some questions and comments. Yeah. Uh, because we talked about casting a little bit, and uh, Jeremy Hoffman, shout out to Jeremy Hoffman, Hoffman who uh, produced GTTV, has now moved on to Epic Games, a lot yeah. of the amazing advertising that you've seen done for Fortnite, a lot of the yes. events that you've seen and stuff, all Jeremy Hoffman. Hoffman uh, hype. And he was insufferable because he and Ryan Stevens and I think Justin Spear and Miguel Lopez yeah. had all read the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so before the first season came out. Yes. And uh, yes. and so they were all like wink, wink, and they were like talking around the office. And then I'd like walk into the kitchen. They'd be like, oh, shoot, wait, Jensen. And I'm like, I don't care. You can spoil the whole thing for me. I don't care. Like, I actually like, and I don't. Like, I don't care about spoilers. Did, I care about them today. Did they spoil yeah, they let me the know a couple things. end of season one? Uh, no, I think Amanda did because oh. Amanda had read it. No. Okay. So here's how it went with Amanda and me. So we started the show. We started it and Amanda had always wanted to read it. And I think maybe had tried earlier and like, it is dry. I get it. Like yeah. you will start if you're like, when it's over, you're like, I'm going to go in the books. Like you'll be a hundred pages in and be like, 
this is rough. And it's like, <laughs> it's it's rough because it's it's written like Shakespeare almost in the sense of, it's like you're reading, you know, like Richard III or something. Like it's, 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 it's written in a way that's like, and all of these things happened. It's just brutal because there's so much sex, there's so much murder, there's so much betrayal yeah. that when those things happen, they're so sudden. And on the show, you almost kind of expect them, but like the most brutal scenes that you are familiar with when you're reading through the books, it's just like, right, right, he was eating bread and then right, he went, whoa. <laughs> it's just like, and then that happened, oh my God. Um, but they were, uh, uh, oh, so we, I think we got like two seat episodes in and Amanda's like, got to read it. And then she just, boom, like flew through the book. Uh, and then was like, okay, I'm all caught up. And then she kept like looking at me and was oh like, my stuff's going to happen. And, yeah. and I actually, uh, you know, uh, asked her specifically about certain things. We actually had an argument at the, after the end of the first season, <laughs> because one of the things that, and Game of Thrones really educated me, uh, not the, the, the show versus books, but just the story in general, it kind of re worked my brain a little bit in terms of like good versus evil and, and, and yeah. who deserves to win in a narrative and why do you care? And, and like, ultimately, like it all needs to be in service to the story. Morally but gray. there was a lot of like, why did we spend time with this character? Yeah. <laughs> like why after all this stuff happened for it to like end that way? Uh, and then after season one, I read everything. And then nice. season two started yeah. and that was a marked difference. It yeah. was fascinating. The, at the end of the first episode, I was like, whoa. And I think at the end of the day, I don't wish I'd waited because I liked another damn good books and I'm glad that I've, I read that story. Yeah. But I think it's better <laughs> to watch the show and then read it after. That's what I did with her. Because I, I just, I enjoyed it in a whole different way totally. now that I knew everything. Now I was paying attention to all sorts of stuff and that those gripes started yeah. to seep in which just, just didn't exist. It was totally For, finished. My mindset is always, cause, cause like, I love books. I'm sorry, books, but video games and movies. I'm sorry, books. <laughs> I'm sorry, books. <laughs> but video games and movies. You had your run. It will always come before books, you know. So it's like, oh, okay, it's sure. Like the, 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 it's quicker too, and yeah. it, you know, and the end. So, so for me, it's and you can pause it. Yeah. Like I think you can pause, you know, reading a book or listening to an audio book for a yeah. certain amount of time. Whereas like it's it's kind of weird to drop a show halfway yeah. through, especially if it's done and you can just binge it. When I when I read something before I see it, then I then I see it and I'm just like. It's Spoilers. I know everything. I know everything. Like, you know, I don't get as much enjoyment if I read something first and then watch it. But if it's the other way around, mm -hmm. I get to enjoy the movie or the show. And then I get to dig deep into the lore yes. of yeah, the yeah, yeah. book. That's my favorite. That's what I did with Harry Potter. It's almost, yeah. It's because there's a lot of stuff's missing. And mm -hmm. then, like, you have all the movie framework or whatever. But then you pick up all the extra stuff they left out and all the character development. So I just like going in it's, that it's order. It's almost like a director's cut or a special yeah. edition or even just a yeah. rewatch. Yeah. Like if there's a film that you really like and you wait a while and then go back and think like, whoa, this scene, how did I not see what mm -hmm. was going on? Or like uh, rewatched uh, uh, Infinity War like a billion times and, <laughs> and like one of my jokes that I love, no spoilers, it's such a joke, like uh, um, Star-Lord says like, all right, here we go, put your game face on, put your mean face on and yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, what is her name is in the back uh, behind him and she's just like, like does like a mean Gamora, face. Gamora. Uh, no, it's not Gamora. Nebula, it's, Nebula. Uh, um, no, oh, Mantis, 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 Mantis. Mantis. Uh, is in the back and she yeah. like grits uh -huh. her teeth and it just totally missed that. And yeah. I, I like I don't think I caught it until like the sixth time I watched it. Yeah. Or Aliens, you and I both Dude, seen five hundred times. My all favorite the weird is dialogue uh, that I know. My favorite ever. I don't know why it just gets me every time is. Earth's closed today, yeah. so pack it up and leave. Just like, sorry, you, dude. You selling tickets to something? There's a lot of a lot of great Robert Downey Jr. lines in that movie, but um. Uh, but the first question that Ian wrote down here, I think we've addressed already. How was the adaptation process been for Game of Thrones? Would you say it has been a successful adaptation? I think it's my favorite adaptation of all time. It, it's uh, it's up there for you. Harry Potter is your favorite. Um, but it was interesting talking to Hoffman and the guys back at uh, Game Trailers because I remember talking to Hoffman and I was like, it's weird that we haven't, because we're supposed to meet this person by this point. And he was like, oh yeah, they're saving that to next season. I'm like, why? He's like, the contract. He's like, then you have to pay that actor less. So there was a lot of like shadowy Got stuff. It. You know, there was a lot of like, you'd see the character, but they would just cast like whoever and then they would bring it in later. And I'd be yeah. like, oh, what a casting snafu. And Hoffman's like, no, that was intentional. Like there's yeah. a reason that that actor changed. There's a reason that, you know, they showed up later and now, now it's like, no, no, th this person's gonna spend a lot of time. Totally. It's the classic Law & Order uh, giveaway. If a person guest stars on Law & Order, they did it. Because why, why have them guest star? You know, what's the point? <laughs> why have Dean Cain on like hilarious. special victims unit if you didn't oh do it? Oh my gosh. You know? <laughs> so, yep, yep, yep. so like when you would hear, you know, like when you hear casting oh news or they're going to be in the season, it's like, oh, oh, okay. So that character obviously is 
not going to die probably or yeah. going to have like, yeah. way more yeah. of an impact. Um, but uh, but it's been interesting seeing them do that shuffle and even like killing people before they died in the books because it's like wrap it up because we're yeah. gonna we're gonna be out of the city <laughs> you know in the yeah. next season. Yeah. Um, but uh, have your has your thoughts changed on Game of Thrones over time in terms of just like those sacrifices or, or how the story has evolved? Well, I I, I haven't read all the books, right. so it's like. But did anything feel off? Like, were there any episodes? Because people, well, a case in point, people talk about the teleportation and, and lightning ravens. You know, okay. like, oh, you know, like okay. these things. You're like, wait, what? It's that moments where it feels like the writers are kind of backed into a corner, and they're like, uh, what do we do? You know, it's like this. Uh, no spoilers. Rewatching <laughs> everything to to prep for yeah. the newest season. This the season seven, which was the newest one before the final season. Correct. Felt a little too much like not pandering, but like talking to the audience in a way. Right. It just fe- it this this new season did feel a little weird this time around, where I was like, <laughs> few- you're winking at the audience uh, yeah. a little yeah, too yeah, yeah. Sure. much. Another thing too, Huber, if you've read so... the books and then you watch this show, have you been on Radiator Springs Racers at California Adventure? The Cars Ride. Too long a line, no. Oh, you got your single rider. I, I know. I've only been there once since they've had it. Oh, that's right. Because you only like go packed. Christmas, yeah. you nutball. Yeah. You, well, nev- you never go throughout the year. I don't know the pass. Well, it does it. Oh, man. <laughs> all, the mon- all the money you spend on games and <laughs> I know. Blu-rays and everything. And <laughs> you can't give it a theme park. Anyway, uh, let me think of another example. <laughs> like, uh, it, it's, it's basically, I get the feeling that like, uh, the, the, you know, the creators or the, the showrunners of Game of Thrones were like driving through traffic in a city, you know, like the whole time. They're just like, we see, we we, we, we have the plot court, you know, the, the, everything plotted on GPS. We know where we're going, but like, oh, there's a crash and oh, there's a big bus in front of us now. And there's all this stuff we got to get around. Yeah. And then season like halfway through <laughs> season six, they got b- beyond the city limits and they hit the gas, baby. Like yeah. you yeah. can feel it like, whoa, like yeah. your hair starts to blow back. It's like, because it's r- like they finally got by past book five and yeah. they're just like now we can do whatever we want Let's go. now we know the end 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 and we can t- completely fill in the gaps in between then and so yeah Nothing but spicy food. Just poof, let's do it. Totally. Um, and that's been it. And that was kind of frustrating, but at the same time, kind of a relief because yeah. uh, you know, as a, as a fan, because it's just like, yes, the shackles are Love free. It. Love it. I, at this point, I've been waiting so long, and I don't want to get into any germ hate, but yeah. like, it's uh, frustrating. Like, as as you know, somebody who's really enjoyed those books and is really curious how things I've seen on the show now actually happen. I guess, like, is yeah. he just gonna like? Is this going to be like the novelization of Phantom Menace or something right? where yeah. you're just like, yeah, I guess I'll read it later yeah. to well, clear up some things. There's always people that point out when it's in the reverse direction. When yeah. you get like, did you read the Revenge of the Sith book? It actually, you know. Uh, <laughs> I think of Walking Dead. Oh, and great, great thing to bring up. Walking Dead does a cool thing where they stick to the arcs and the main yeah. beats, mm-hmm. but they just... Oh, this person dies instead of this person. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you know. So I that's think, a surprise. Yeah. So it's like, Which, hey, you know, if you're a fan of the comics, it's like you get to see all these really awesome arcs that are that are from the comics. But we're gonna surprise you by having different characters interact in different ways. And, and I think a lot of like, fans. It took me a long time, and I used to be right with you. If you're like just you know diehard, you have to do the 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 content as it was originally written. Um, until I, you know what I think one of my favorite surprises was, and you brought up Batman Begins, and like. I'll even try to avoid this spoiler. <laughs> but there was a, a casting <laughs> surprise at the end of that movie. Oh, one of those things. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And oh. up until that point, I was like, spoil everything. I don't care. Yeah. And I remember Amanda like looked at me in the theater because she wasn't that familiar with these characters. Yeah. Like that didn't mean a lot to her. Yeah. But she could tell like, oh, they just did a thing. Yeah. And she looked at me and I looked at her and she was like, oh. she's like, did you see that coming? I'm like, I did not. Yeah. And I was like, Okay, I enjoyed that. I'm yeah. glad I didn't know that. I'm glad I wasn't spoiled. Very cool. So, okay. So, like, from that moment, it kind of changed my mind of, like, maybe I'll be a little lighter about spoilers. Thanks, Nolan. And I'm ask for stuff. Um, let's get through comments. Sam Sorensen. I'll start off by saying that um, I'm a, of the same mind as Douglas Adams and Stephen King. An adaptation is its own entity. Completely agree. You cannot like or love an adaptation, but it is... I'm ex- uh, oh, sorry. You can not like or love an adaptation, but it is exactly what it purports to be adapted. Different. And no matter how the changes are made, the original work still exists for you to enjoy. You don't have to enjoy every change made. But well, oh. doesn't Stephen King 
hate The Shining? Uh, Stephen King hates a lot of that. So Stephen King has, a, <laughs> has an interesting love or hate relationship with his adaptations. Okay, okay. Uh, some of the disease written, some of them, yeah. Uh, I'm a huge, oh, while I don't have any specific episodes to point out, I'm a huge fan of Arya's storyline, especially her time spent traveling and learning. I'm a big fan of old kung fu movies, and her various arcs throughout the series remind me a lot of those. The eagerness, bra- yeah, there is kind of like a Kill Bill yeah. vibe. Uh, the eagerness, brashness, and ensuing failure to the half-smiling masters whom guide her through her trials, willing or not, without her knowing what she is learning. The arcs of all the Stark children are incredible to watch, but hers is by far my favorite. Yeah, I think th- there's a reason why Arya is like one of the top female baby names, <laughs> or like everybody's got a dog. Uh, Jeremy Hoffman has, yeah. you know, a dog named Arya. Um, uh, yeah, they did a really great job. I uh, not a fan of the latest stuff, but uh, you know, well, that stay tuned for spoiler mode season eight. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'll get yeah, into yeah. that. Um, but um, yeah, any any specific characters without getting too much into spoilers? Anybody that stands out that you're like, come on, in Thrones? Yeah, I mean, you think has just been appears to you as someone who has not read the books to be have been adapted well. Oh. Have, have been l- clearly realized. Well, I think the casting on that show oh. is probably uh, near perfect. You know, and even again, Tyrion, who I think is is different than you know. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dinklage, who's different from yeah. the Tyrion in the book. I'm so in love with this Dinklage. I wanted this Dinklage. Who doesn't get enough credit is Tywin. Tywin. Oh, Tywin. Charles Dance. Tywin hype, dude, dude. Golden Child hype. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like he is a really good character. Sato Numspa. It feels like uh, it feels like I don't know. In the books, maybe he's just like. I feel like that was a good probably one for yeah. one because he's just so old school in his thought of like knowledge and and patience, right? But also a little bit of ruthlessness. Um, I like that character, and that's against time. And there's no way you could do these as a movie. Can you mm-hmm. imagine? Can you imagine like the first season as a movie? You know, there's yeah. just, just no time. <laughs> there's yeah. a way to. You'd have to cut half of the characters. And uh, part of what the gift that you're given with that time and a lot of these conversations that happen is you, you know, uh, Littlefinger, Tywin, Cersei, like all the the Hound, all these characters get a chance to tell you who they are and like why I am this way. And uh, spoilers. Coming up at the end of this episode, I'm going to talk about my favorite scene in the books that has not been in the films and will not be in the films it's, or in the series because it's impossible now. But uh, without spoiling it, uh, it's about that I'm going to win. Wait, that's not fair. Tough. And that's kind of Game of Thrones to me. It's just this idea of like, it doesn't matter. And uh, Tywin and Tyrion have just some amazing scenes where Tyrion's like, how did, how could you do that? And yeah. he's like, well, let's talk about the alternatives. You know, like yeah. one of the most savage things that, Tyrion, that Tywin plans in that book. Like he justifies pretty well. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah good like, point. He's like, Tywin. he's like, would you rather meet on a battlefield yeah. and, you yeah. know, wipe out our men, wipe out their men, you know, or, or are we at war? You know, are, should we make, have decisive victories? You know, should we, how much, you know, subterfuge is too much subterfuge, yeah. you know? And, and it's interesting to see us with these characters that are still surviving i feel that if you're really in with you know one person versus another like at this point you're almost willing to let them do anything he's like yeah. just win i don't care <laughs> you know just we can't the, the stakes are too high you know we can't let these things happen I, just do it take the gloves off it doesn't matter yeah we're in the beginning there is definitely this sense of like how can we how can we still be civilized you know like uh, sean bean in season one you know like being made the, the hand it's like okay what's my responsibility here and like no one around him is thinking that way <laughs> and it's tough to to see characters make mistakes and then be like but uh, but i like this person they were just trying to be a nice person and yeah. then you like really think about it you're like yeah they were so dumb about it though and yeah. it's interesting to see who survives and stuff you're a very wholesome person how hard is it for you to watch this show it's and really watch hard. these terrible terrible people it's really hard because i want everyone to just like hang out get along it's like please you know it's really interesting but it's like it's a commentary on the yeah. world you know yeah. it's like there's bigger threats out there then, you know, we shouldn't fight each other. We should, like, come together. And wh- one thing that I think they actually, uh, they've actually they done a very good job of uh, that is almost completely one-for-one, one, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, because we want to keep this conversation going on social media and Patreon and the comics, comments, and in the comics. Uh, Game of Thrones comics? Did they ever make, did they make Game of Thrones I'm comics? I'm sure there I think are. So. Yeah, gotta be. There's gotta be. Uh, it's gotta be a graphic novel or something. Yeah. Uh, is the actual world itself, where everything is. Mm-hmm. Obviously, people teleport, like some, you know, Peter Baelish is like, hi, I'm in I'm in this yeah. area now. And yeah. like, how the hell, did, what? Yeah. Um, I feel like but, he has like uh, underground tunnels or something. That's, Baelish yeah. is just like, ha, Surprise. Ha, 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 ha. But um, <laughs> uh, they, uh, uh, 
when you see that map in the beginning, you know, when you see the changes to the worlds, you know, like uh, some of those are heartbreaking in the intro when it's just like, oh no, and, like you see that, like that this place will never be the same again and it's, you know, showcased. But uh, specifically how how far everything is f- uh, from one another, they didn't really mess with the map. And it's really interesting to see like how far Essos is from Westeros, like how far the wall is from, you know, King's Landing, how easy it is for King's Landing to be like, well, we don't care. Like yeah. we don't care what the Starks are doing. We don't care totally. about rumors of wildlings or white walkers or whatever. Totally. Um, and one of those is I ugh, I'm gonna I might butcher this the inn at the crossroads I believe it's called yeah, uh, yeah 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 are you as someone who hasn't read the books are you do you know what I'm talking about where hot pie is and yes stuff? yeah dude yes. yes love that place that, but, so cozy but what an anchor you know what I mean yeah. I, it's interesting because the question will come up on social media a lot where people will be like what worlds do you want to live in I'll think yeah. of my favorite like properties that I love to read and it's like they're always based on pain they're always based on like hard I don't want to live in Gotham I don't want to live in Westeros I don't want to live any of these places and the end of the crossroads is kind of one of those like you know it's like it's no quarrel almost it's like nothing ever really like intense happens there yep um uh I I might be corrected with that which is one scene specifically I'm thinking of that like I think maybe maybe some people die in that in that place but uh it's always yeah just like the okay it's it's kind of in between everything Mm -hmm. and it's like where people stop and it's just kind of like yeah the 50 yard line you know where everybody just and so it's it's nice that the show's been able to um to to get that across with that specifically yeah it's the Um, shire of game of thrones (laughs) right (laughs) well in in, in a way I mean it is the difference between it and the Shire is like a lot of people haven't been to the Shire where this is just right in the middle it's just like everyone's been to this place Uh, and it's interesting to see yeah a character like Hot Pie who's just kind of like I'm gonna step out of the story (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna like what do you call it live Space Channel Dom, uh, potentially a Hatake, but I love it when adaptations are as loose as possible. Okay. If you're able to stray stylistically far from the material while still being uh, d- definitely a, pr- a product of the material, it has the potential to highlight and reinforce the core strengths of both. I crave that over a rote transition that adds nothing new. Game of Thrones is a special case that I find difficult to judge since it was so rever- uh, reverent to the books for so long and is now diverged wildly since it needs an ending that the books haven't provided. I would instead point to the Harry Potter movies. The first two movies are overtly faithful but long but long and tough to sit through. The third movie, though, with Alfonso Cuaron at the helm, an absolute blast, which isn't afraid to shed or refresh stuff from the book and sets the series up with the darker tone that is sorely needed. Uh, case in point, like, uh, from uh, Azkaban, like, there's one scene, there's a lot of magic in that movie, and uh, that's one thing that Amanda laments from a lot of the adaptations, is she's like, the world is magical, but you don't see like what it's like to be a magician and live in that world. And it's so easy to do that on film because you can have multiple things happening in a plane yeah. that if I'm reading a book, I have to tell you beat by beat what's happening. That's why a lot of scenes in Game of Thrones take forever to set up yeah. because it's like, you know, like someone eats a meal and you're like, here we go. Like a woman takes her clothes off and you're like, here we go. You know, we have to describe her breasts for like five paragraphs. Like, um, and whereas in the book, just boop, there you go. Yeah. And so what, one of my favorite characters from Azkaban is this guy in the leaky cauldron, I think, and he's just stir- he's moving his finger around while he's reading a book, and and the spoon is spinning around in the cup. Yeah, it'd be a weird thing to read in the book, you know. It'd be a weird thing to highlight and really focus on. But like, if you just kind of pass by him, then it, you just think like, oh, that's right. Like, there are people that go to work and do magic. There are yeah. people that you know, like you know, provide for their families. You get a little bit of that with the Weasleys when you see like kind of how they've made oh. the, the the farm work. You know, Mr. Weasley. Uh, Mr. Weasley. Um, My man. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been interesting. We were talking just, just about time and characters and, 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 and getting to know them more. And, um, but specifically what Space Channel Dom is saying with, uh, surprises. Yeah, it's interesting. Like there's, there's a certain amount of release. And I think one thing that also, uh, affects that is where I tend to get really salty about adaptations is, uh, how how many times am I going to get to do this again? Yeah. I must I must imagine like h- half of the excitement around Black Panther was a lot of fans being like, I never thought in a million years yeah. this was going to happen. Yeah. I'm kind of that way with Flash. Like they, they're like dodging around a Flash yeah. movie. Is it when they, we happen? finally got a Green Lantern movie, everybody was like, this looks terrible. And I'm like, I understand, but like this is probably the only Green Lantern movie I'm going to get in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so it's this question of like, you know, can you should you be loose with something when it's the first time we've ever gotten a stab at it and we probably won't get another chance for a long time? Like, yeah. should you squander that on whatever? Uh, a funny, extremely loose adaptation is uh, Deadpool 2. <laughs> Deadpool 2 does some stuff. I was like, wow. Like, I can't believe 
they re- really just kind of like threw a middle finger at the fans there, you know, like, intentionally, where they're just like, we don't care. Do you like that character? I don't care. I'm trying to remember. I don't care. Uh, I can't, yeah, I don't want to spoil it, okay, but there's just I'm like- I'm trying to remember. I loved that movie. There was a, that movie plays on expectations like no other comic book movie I have ever <laughs> okay, seen. I remember, <laughs> yeah, okay. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on brand, and yeah, it makes yeah, yeah. sense. Yeah. And so it's weird. It's tough when you have those things. Like Wonder Woman. It's like, oh, finally, yes. You know, it's yeah. like we're going to get this amazing Wonder Woman. And, you know, like, does it, you know, do, you know, is it going to be tarnished by, like, Ben Affleck wandering in? You know, like, should yeah. it just focus on her? <laughs> you know, like, you know, what storyline do you do? Uh, it was interesting. I imagine there were a lot of Marvel fans uh, very upset that, like, you know, um, the original Nick Fury is very different from Samuel Jackson. The original Captain Marvel very different from you know Danvers. Yeah. Um, it was very much based on the Ultimates. You know, Captain America very different from the Cap that we got. You know, in this world. Oh my! And favorite. so, like, do you go back Not to Marvel. the original or do you? My favorite um, thing ever is Martin Freeman, The Hobbit. Like, I'm sorry. I adore that man and oh, I yeah. oh, love yeah. him as Bilbo Baggins. The, yeah, it's very, very good casting. It's so good yeah. because there's like, dude, there's a, such a giant change that is so subtle from the movie Hobbit to the book. It's kind of, it's not really a spoiler, so I'm going to talk about it. Okay. Is Smog goes and destroys the town or whatever he's flying over smog is destroying in the book bilbo doesn't even care whatever (laughs) like does not really care at all in the movie he his whole thing he's standing there he's like what the hell have we done oh my god what have we done i'm so depressed i'm feeling these emotions like that is so much better and like sure it's like you're changing a beloved character and you're changing like classic literature but I think you're changing it for the better because if he doesn't care, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That is a, cho- it is a choice, yeah. you know? So as long as someone is committed to the choice, the filmmaker, the actor, I'm all for it. I know that's probably a really big change, you know, for people that love right. the Hobbit. And like, I'm not saying the Hobbit movies no, are no, great. I, th- I think that was a good know, change. But uh, Sexy Dwarves was not a, was not a good change. <laughs> That was maybe an issue that I have. Yeah. What if we make this one dwarf look a lot like a dwarf, and this other guy, he's just going to be a dude. How about that? Yeah. What do you, th- you think? Gosh. They have a scale yeah. from dwarfness to dudeness. I love, I love The Hobbit 2. One and three. Well, we'll talk. We'll get into The Hobbit in a little bit. Excellent. Uh, Jesse Abraham, maybe you guys can talk about the Telltale games a little bit. Ooh. From what I've played, it was so awful from the characters. F- oh, I'm guessing, whoa. So he doesn't specifically say... The Telltale game a little bit. I get oh, Game, oh, game of, of, Thrones. of Thrones. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because you were talking about Walking Dead, Got it. and they've adapted so much stuff yeah. that I was. We should just talk about Telltale in general. Those have yeah. been really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Batman, very interesting. Yeah. Um, from what <laughs> yeah. I played, it was so awful. Yes, the Game of Thrones game was not their their best effort, and I'll the characters too. felt like they were boiled down. Shame on you. Uh, felt like they were boiled down into their most basic form. Sadly, after playing the game, I can't help but feel like the TV show is heading in that direction. I really hope the last season proves me wrong. Hmm. Again, those expectations. You got to yeah. let, let it go. Bull, let it go. Let it go. Um, uh, what? Um, yeah. So I mean, that, that game was interesting. It, it was kind of like this happened, but didn't. And I guess that was my frustration. Was I'm like, just go, go with it or don't. The ultimate. Ge- if tell, if I, I could make a Telltale style game of mm-hmm. Game of Thrones, uh, and I, st- I think this would still sell enough. I would just throw the show out. I would start over from the beginning of the whole thing, yeah. and let you take it. You know, let yeah. you like, can you get this character out of this story? They die in the book, but can you get them out? You know, like, Genius. can you make, now that you know the mistakes they made, can you, you oh know, navigate? God. Jones, that's you so know, like, fun. But it's that release. That's but so then you gotta fun, let, then you gotta dude. let the show go, you know? Um, the same thing. That uh, is, that is I would cool. also love, uh, the, ult- the ultimate Game of Thrones game would be an RTS, and they did make one, but yeah, like, yeah, I would yeah. love the same thing to start from book one yeah. as an RTS. You pick the family, and then you decide. And it's it's not all tactics. It's There's a lot of conversations you have to have. There's a yeah. lot of, you can literally like raise kids and marry them off if you want, yeah. you know, like, because that's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but knowing what you know, so when like Lord Frey comes up, or like That's the Boltons, or like, so hey, you're like, no, fun. no, Boltons. Yeah. <laughs> but, I love um, it. but uh, yeah, so you, you liked the Game of Thrones Telltale. What were you? Yeah. You're a Telltale fan in general. Telltale Any fan. Telltale games you don't like, uh, just for the record? Uh, Walking Dead season three. Okay. I did not like. Got it. Yeah. Very low point. Low four point was the sure. final. Four was the final. Got yeah. It. Season three, not so good. Nice. Yeah. Um, but anything, anything particularly stand out? Uh, from the, from the I game. wanted them to just completely leave out uh, 
movie or, or show and book characters. Sure. You know, anytime they came in, it was jarring and weird and awkward and, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, sh- Ramsey coming and going once in a while would have been okay at I, most. I would like to see people from afar. Yeah. Because I, I like it on the show when you get a sense of, like, what it's like to just live in King's Landing. Yeah. Like, how crazy it is to, like, see, like, and, like, the yeah. army comes back and you're like, whoa! And you're just, like, you're just a baker and then, like, oh my god, there's Jamie Lannister. Like, yeah. uh, and especially because there's a lot of, like, rumors and stuff. And so it's interesting to see like how the the people perceive these leaders and kind of what they think of them like imagine what they must think of Daenerys and Cersei and Tyrion and you know Jon Snow and uh, Sansa you know and like all these people that like they're supposed to look up to and accept the you know the the rules of would you be okay if just Assassin's Creed straight like didn't make a Game of Thrones no just go in but just, we're just like full board or like or like made Game of Thrones without calling it Game of Thrones like just Assassin's Creed Battle for the Throne yeah. or something and it's just like I think they could pull it off sure Kings, uh, you see King's Landing I just want to climb all over yeah. that you see the opening of that show and all the buildings are built <laughs> yeah. you know it's just I, just I just see footholds and they added all the like dialogue options now sure like, you can yeah. do that I want it now. Michael Barub, I have a few thoughts about spoilers. Don't worry, no spoilers below. I don't like them. I like to go into things fresh. Creator's intent, as Huber would say. This is why I don't watch trailers after the initial teaser. This is why I don't click on videos or articles for things that I haven't seen yet. Dude, there were some movies this year. I'm not even going to say what movies because I don't want to spoil the movies because there were some movies this year. I saw one trailer. One. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I don't want to watch any other trailers. I want to go into this movie blind. And even that one trailer. I don't, I can't watch them. And not like, whoa, big spoiler, like the ending. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I can't do it. And I, again, I'm I'm changing. I'm a big trailer fan. I'm a big fan of advertising. Like, I I, I do like the loosey goosiness because I like when people take risks. Like, some of my favorite forms of advertising are when, and spoilers is kind of off topic from adaptation specifically, but like, uh, uh, that's why, yeah, any Game of Thrones advertisement, did you see a new Game of Thrones trailer? I was like, why? Why would I do why? that? Why? What is the point? What's the point? Um, but like, the more, as I get older and older, like, yeah, it's an epidemic. It's it's yeah. it's an issue. And it doesn't help being an editor because I pay, they flash something and it's like, there's yeah. no flashing. If I get two frames of it, it's in my brain now yes. and I can't, I can't wash it out. So true. Now onto my hot take. Easy A is way too sensitive about spoilers. Should you talk about the end of Endgame during a group stream the week it premieres? No. Is it okay to talk about the ending to a video game that was released five years ago? Of course it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it's, there a time yeah. and place for spoilers? Great discussions are able to happen when we are to dig down into the meat and bones of a story or production. If we're constantly tiptoeing around spoilers, then we can never really dig deep enough to have any meaningful conversations. I love EZA, and I love the fresh opinions that the allies typically have about video games and other pop culture. Although, as Ned Stark once said, nothing before the word but really matters. Um, uh, I like that's this. a good quote. Um, I love EZA, but I'm tired of getting excited by a discussion only to listen in and hear without getting into details, or I don't want to ruin it, so I don't say it. Uh, to stop there, I think I think one of the issues, maybe there's something we can explore moving in the future, but I just think it's a case by case basis. We do so many shows and and yeah. so many opportunities that like you just kind of want to check like what are we what are the rules yeah. here? Uh, Syndrome is a good place. We let the spoilers fly, but <laughs> because with you, a warning because every episode we'll say, is like ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah, I'll be like, like hey, so you know like this coming. episode is about this yeah and so then we'll get into it um so yeah may- maybe maybe we should just do a better job of like be like Ree? okay spoiler yeah. territory i like flashing the siren like <laughs> spoiler spoilers uh i'm not saying that you should be mind uh that you shouldn't be mindful of spoilers you absolutely should and i think that's also one of the other things is like we f- we we flap our laps our lips so much our laps uh that it's just always good to err on the side of being careful because yeah. it's just like the dude there's some podcasts we've shot and when it's over i'm like what did I say? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So it's just nice in the moment to be like, okay, let me just err on the side of that everyone would be angry if I said this. You absolutely should. At a certain point, it's up to the viewer to choose what they watch if they have the, the warnings, if they know ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, if you don't want something spoiled, follow Kyle's lead and draw your hoodie around your eyes leading up to release. Don't click on a video that has things I'm excited for discussion in the title and get mad when a previous entry is spoiled. It's unfair to the rest of the community to serve up watered down food to satisfy what I am suspecting is a minority. Easy Alice is watered down. Just get used to it. Water this is down. happening more and more, and I'm left wondering who those discussions are for. Who wants to listen to Game of Thrones discussions who hasn't already seen the series? Uh, I think in this case of this show, because we... Uh, this is not a Game of Thrones show. This is not a Game of Thrones episode. We're, we're specifically talking about adaptations. And yeah. we will get into spoiler stuff at the very end. If you're if you're hungry for it, stick around. Yes. Sorry for rambling on for so long. I just want to see Easy A succeed, and I'm worried that the content's being hurt to protect an audience that might not even exist. They exist, I, I assure you. TLDR, I, stop treating things like a spoiler minefield. If you don't want spoilers for the past season of Game of Thrones, don't click on videos that have Game of Thrones discussion in the title. All right, okay. okay. I despise spoilers, so I'm going to keep 
not spoiling things. I'm surprised there's not a spoiler monster on uh, I mean, Mysterious Monsters. Yeah. I can't. Spoilers the are the salty worst. salty spoiler. They are the worst <laughs> thing on the internet. I can't handle spoilers. You know what I it like. is. You know what? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the, it's I can't. The I can't even go on websites now. Like the only yeah. safe website for me now is Eurogamer. Right. Eurogamer is the best. They it, don't yeah. spoil things. You go on any website now. All it is in the headlines is the Game thumbnails. of Thrones. Yeah. End game. Game of Thrones. End game. And I'm just like, what is it? I can't even go on on the internet. Anymore. It's just the lowest hanging fruit. Like people yeah. like in our position, man. Like yeah. are writing a lot of times. Like is our livelihood. Like we have to make something engaging. We have to explain ourselves well. Yeah. And so when you have, I literally just have to write a sentence, and I and I I have a, I have your attention. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I didn't even think of that up. I just know it happens because I went to a premiere or I heard it from somebody else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's rough. Um, uh, a bit of a tangent. We I don't want to, I don't want to get talking about spoilers too much, but we will attempt not to spoil. Well, there will be a clear line of demarcation yes. between us and the spoilers. Morgan Mohalla, how has the adaptation process been for G- uh, GOT? What would you say is it, would you say it is a successful adaptation? I am mixed on the adaptation. I've read all the books, so I'm left with an empty feeling for some of the seemingly important plot lines that were abandoned for the show. At the same time, I cannot complain about too much about getting a well crafted conclusion to the story in the form of the show. One thing as a book reader that I can say that the show does well is uh, because, uh, and I will say, it's my, my absolute favorite scenes from the book at the end of the show, and I did, what I did have is we were like in that season. I was like, here we go, here we go. And I'm yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. We're kind of detracting. And then I would hear a clear, it hit a very clear point where I'm like, oh. It's not happening. Oh, it's not happening, okay. And so it's like, Stunner. at least the show, uh, shame on you, silence. It's not spoilers. Hush, that's a, dude, that's a major spoiler, bro. They don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, God. No one knows what I'm talking about. That's a Google search, man. Now that they <laughs> see that word, they're going to click on Oh, boy. Wow. No one knows. I'm going to beep that word. I'm nope. going to beep that word out. I'm oh going to tell you to beep that word out. Oh we can God. get into that at the end of the show. If talking about. <laughs> Again, something else. But who knows, man? Who knows? That might be. They might That they might throw that in. You don't know. You don't know. Seven episodes. We'll see. Um, Six episodes. Don't get your hopes Six? Up. I thought it was seven. Six. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. There we go. Expectations already, <laughs> already taking a dip. Um, but it was clear they, they, whenever they made a decision that wasn't wishy-washy, they just did it. They were very yeah. much like, no, this character's not on the show. No, we're not going to do it. They actually explained a lot, too, in interviews and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. And so, like Morgan's saying, like, I, I think book readers, we all have like those one or two characters or, you know, uh, you know Strong Bell Wass, you're my boy, uh, is never going to be on the show. Such a fun character in the books. And... Uh, uh, but like we know and we can move on because uh, they've just been very clear about that. So I appreciate that as a fan. Yeah. Um, Morgan continues. Morgan's got a lot of posts. What sequence was especially well shot? Uh, the entire Battle of the Bastards of episode course. was exceptionally shot. The tension was set on high for an extended period of time. We were taken on a roller coaster of emotions. The action shots held on the action without cutting for prolonged periods and contained the most impressively gruesome and dynamic medieval battle scene I have ever witnessed. Yeah, um, the, uh, there's a shot with corpses. And it is the most that that image will forever be burned into my brain. It's hard to shake because yeah, it yeah. reminds me so much of just like ancient, like ancient tales of warfare, right? Or like Renaissance p- paintings of like these old historical battles. Like just that imagery is so powerful. It's it's and best. just like we were talking about the cast, so intense. I think it's interesting with Game of Thrones uh, in in them choosing what to spend money on. Mm-hmm. Like, do we need? That's why, like in the later seasons, where we'll get just like a huge wide like shot of the Wall or Winterfell, I'm like, whoa, whoa okay, this is cool. Yeah. Like, I know what the Wall looks like. Why do we? Why do we really need this at this point? Like, mm-hmm. wow, that's okay. Like, yeah. and I just think creatively, like, what was the process of them deciding? Like, no, I want you to stare at the wall for 30 full seconds. Like, yeah. oh, wow, that's was not cheap. <laughs> that's a very yeah. tough thing, you know, like practical and CG and all of these elements going together. And so it's interesting for, uh, and I always just kind of like smirk at, at people that complained about it where they were like, we would get a super budget heavy show episode and then the next wouldn't be so much. And they'd be like, fans would be like, Ugh. and it's like, can't you see what's happening? Can't you tell that like, they're like, we could spread our money across everything or we could save it up because we know this thing's coming. Mm-hmm. We know this fight's coming. Even in the last couple seasons, stuff that like, boy, I can't wait to read that scene in the book because man, that's, you know, the dragons kicked their ass. <laughs> um, it's a... Uh, uh, 
so it's it, it's interesting to see kind of where the battles that they've chosen literally <laughs> like yeah. those moments uh, that they've chosen to uh, to accentuate. Um, did anything seem under budget? Were there any moments Dorn. in the show where do, yeah, wait, the, it's a great it's like a soap opera. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Young and the Restless. Terrible. You know, the Dorn every time you Terrible. go there. Terrible. Because it's like, man, every time we're you know, like we're in Marine, we're in you know all these other huge cities in yeah. Essos that are so important to Daenerys' story, and then yeah. it's like, do we blow the budget on some super crazy castle shot when it's we all we need to. See is just literally this living room. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, and I mean, well, I mean, to devil's advocate. Yeah. What you get from that though that is interesting is Dorn is kind of thrown at you. You're like, wh- wh- where? What? You know? Yeah. It's like how, this seems so different. Talk about people that like are kind of making it their point to care about what happens in this other side of the world, but like they don't have to. This place looks amazing. You know, it's like just chill, man. Just have a pina colada and just l- relax. You know, but like they can't. They're they're too they're too caught up in the world's <laughs> events. They want to try to make changes. And so when like you find out that things in the past that happened in Westeros were the fault of Dorn, like uh, crazy. You know, yeah. and so just popping in there and seeing it for a second, I think obviously is done on a budget, but does also kind of play up like. Where are we? It makes you feel like we are just in, we're not, you know, in Kansas anymore. We are yeah. somewhere totally different. And that's a fascinating thing, even in the span, a span of the, the, the show so far and the, um, uh, the books, there are still places mm-hmm. that like a lot of people, place, people haven't been like, there's yeah. no, you know, there's no like Delta airlines. Like they can't, you know, it's like, you know, like the Daenerys can ride around. That's great. But I just like, didn't like that the garden looked like just a regular spot in King's Landing. <laughs> sure. You know? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. like the same. Yeah. Or ease or just someone's like a rich person's backyard yeah, that exactly. they could have just gone to or like yeah. some. Yeah. It didn't stand. It wasn't distinct. All right, I'm, I'm happy you had an answer to that. Yeah. Morgan's on a roll. Uh, what are other great adaptations? I believe that the Lord of the Rings films capture the heart of the book series and is an easy adaptation to point as the standard for what an adaptation should be. Yes, uh, I, I hunger, I thirst. Now that we're done, uh, same thing with Harry Potter. I'm in the same position with Lord of the Rings that I am with Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Now that we're done, you know, we're doing the Fantastic Beasts, that'll, that, that'll run its course. Whenever we decide to go back, whenever we go back to Fellowship, whenever we go back to Sorcerer's Stone, animate yeah. it, please. I think it's. I think that's like well, the natural doing next the, course. Uh, show, right? Uh, the Lord of the Rings show, but yeah. it's not Fellowship. Live it's action. it's it's live action, but it's not Fellowship. It's Correct. like a whole other yeah, yeah, yeah. time period. Um, and you know, have at it. You know, yeah. uh, but um, one of my one of major criticisms, and I don't really think I thought about the, the, this at first. I was like, this is great. And the music, Howard Shore, just slays that trilogy, yeah. man. Unbelievable. And the Hobbit yeah. is good too, but. Um, there's some moments uh, musically that just like I I can't take it even if I'm not even watching it just hearing it like I tear up. Uh, but um, everybody's human <laughs> and like the hobbits are like human hobbits and the elves are like human elves. Yeah. You know Elrond's just like yeah it's that guy from the Matrix. You know and so it's like it'd be neat animated to actually like make them make their skeleton structures look different. You know like to actually make dwarves like whoa. You know like yeah. uh, you know to make hobbits like look. Make the hobbits' noses huge, you know, like yeah. just no human has a nose like that, you know, and it's like they focused on the feet, and I think did a fun job of you being like their yeah. feet are weird, but yeah. like that was about it, and it and it's hard to even Gandalf, like he's not he's not a human being, like he is not the same race as as you know Aragorn and and, and all yeah. these other people, and so it'd be interesting to to sh- you kind of get that with Christopher Lee a little bit because he's such an odd duck, like yeah. he's such a fascinating human, his nose is so crooked, <laughs> and like uh, that like you get a little otherworldly sense about him, but. Yeah. Um, uh, nitpicky nonsense but yeah that was like one of my only issues with Lord of the Rings but it's so good and when you know they do the face swapping with the hobbits when it's like when they do the distant shots it's oh, literally yeah. a little person with the mask with the yeah. little Sean Astin mask on yeah. that you can't tell but then there's like when Boromir he's like no and like they like CG like yeah. Frodo's head on it's like uh, it's a little silly when you see those special it's... effects so when you like you know how it was done then uh uh, not all of those hold up. Doesn't have that Return of the King budget, right? Uh, uh, Morgan Mohalla, what are some bad adaptations? It's a good conversation to have. Uh, practically every video game movie ever made. Favorite video game film? Resident Evil. Mortal Kombat. Oh, sure. Mortal Kombat. For too, sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. The first Resident Evil, really? Yeah, it, I've, I've. It's all lab, man. They go yeah. through the house. They run through the house. It, it's, uh, it's they, one they, of those they hindsight. snub their noses at the house. It's one of those hindsight things where when I, when obviously I, it came out and I saw it, I was like, that was lame. <laughs> but as the movies have gone on, oh, and sure, got sure, sure. way worse. Right. It's made that one better. <laughs> 
way. Which is also something else you can do with adaptations. Yeah. If you ever want to make an adaptation better, just yeah. just follow it with a string of <laughs> terrible films. Yep. You know what's hilarious, dude? As many issues as I have with those movies, I've yeah. seen every single one of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to. And Mila Jovovich in it is awesome. I yeah, was. she's great. Just, just, just doesn't age. Fifth Elements on Netflix looks exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Silent Hill could be seen as an exception. Silent I actually Hill enjoyed incredible. Silent Hill. Uh, Silent Hill has one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. Uh, and it's not. it might not be the scene that you're thinking about. Skin I think I've told you this before. No. Oh. Uh, a woman is burned alive. In that oh, movie. yeah. She's not even burned alive. She's cooked. You see yeah. a human being cooked. Yeah. And that. Some brutal kills. That. Top tier kills. That is extremely disturbing to me. You <laughs> yeah. know, like it's yeah. not in a gory way. Not just. Yeah, I was like, I you remember. Don't need gore. I remember. I remember that my spine got cold <laughs> when I saw that scene. I was like, wow, that's rough. Uh, I believe that the source uh, of the problem with video game adaptations are that they are poorly understood by the film's directors and producers. Nailed it. Also, the transition from how the two media are experienced seems to put people off as well. I still get excited for every big budget video game and anime movie, though, as we only see one good. Uh, all, all, we only need one good one to get interested and take care of the rest of them, lest we forget Marvel started with one good Iron Man movie and I now. Here we are. I really hope uh, this person put their money where their mouth is. Morgan, here up. Calling up. you out, Morgan. I really hope you saw Rampage in the theater. <laughs> it's on HBO right because now. Because that was an incredible adaptation. Yeah. Rampage the game, not much story. It's just monsters kicking oh, ass. Oh, yeah. I think. Yes. I think if you're going to adapt. Awesome movie. Almost as a rule, I think if you're going to adapt a video game, yeah. do your own thing. 150 yep. billion percent. Yeah. Because don't try to make a story. Like that's like, oh yeah, this happened in the games too. And you're like, what? Like you, you kind of do have to make your own. You kind of have to do reset everything. Love you, Morgan. If you're gonna make a Legend of Zelda movie, don't base it on any <laughs> game. Don't even come close to that. Yeah. Like make your own thing. That's what every Legend of Zelda game is. Yeah. Is this new th story? You know, like maybe hint at stuff. Maybe you know, like you know, Link like sees the hieroglyphs and it's like, oh, Majora's Mask. You know, it's like you can have little teases in there, but like just yeah. tell you to surprise me the entire time. Mario. Like I can't. Super think Mario. Yeah, Mar yeah. So weird. They're ma yeah, they're making it. Um, Wait, did you watch Rampage yet? I have not seen Rampage yet. Okay, when you do, let me know. Okay, all right. Some good action. Cool, I'm stoked. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, like, yeah. I love that, like, uh, <laughs> Um, I just want to talk about one of my favorite quotes from uh, Ian McKellen, but I love that The Rock, The Rock is in like, when you go through like the, the hot movies on HBO, he's, he's in like rock. five of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And he's in his own HBO show, Ballers. Like that guy, yep. Hobbs and Shaw, like to, man, yeah. they're making another Jumanji with him. Like, wow, out of control. Yeah. Um, but one of my favorite uh, Ian McKellen lines, uh, actual spoken words in an interview was, they were interviewing everyone for the first X-Men film and they went actor by actor and asked them, have you read the X-Men comics? And they were like, oh yeah, no, I haven't. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. And then Ian McKellen, and this is word for word, says, have I, Ian McKellen, read the X-Men comics? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, yeah, I don't yeah. think he's like, he's, he's not talking down to the audience. He's just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, Here's I'm not, the thing. Though. I'm not experienced, but how cool. They're like, I'm coming from this. I have a counter to this. Really looking at this character, you know, and really thinking like, who is this guy? But... And, uh, Michael Gambon is an incredible actor. And, right, Alfred and, and uh, that the Dumbled Batman series. Dumbledore in the movies is not Dumbledore in the books, and he admits he never read the books. Oh no, Michael Gambon is yeah. You're, yeah. I'm trying, I'm, who am I thinking of? Uh, so, the Alfred in the movies. What are, yeah, what are your thoughts name. on Dumbledore? Not um, yeah, original, uh, Richard Harris. Not Richard um, Harris, but Gambon. Because um, it's clear he he's just doing his own thing. Yeah. No. You I, know? I I respect that. It was a it was a tough pill to swallow mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, my my favorite moment of of anything that he does uh, because I was like, you know, just watching Prisoner of Azkaban, just like I don't like you, you know, and like nothing yeah. he can do. He's just fighting an uphill battle the entire time. For sure. And like in that first viewing, the one moment where I was like, there you go, like yeah. that. That's Dumbledore to me. And it's uh, at the end when. Um, uh, the time turner stuff. He, he gives it back to her and, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. okay, and remember not to say anything. We've talked about this before. Yeah. He's like, remember not to say anything. And she's like, uh, and, and she's like, she's like, what about the time turn? And he's, he basically says something like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he like taps his nose and backs out of the yeah. door. And that's like, because th that's one of the things I think that makes Dumbledore so special is that he's not just this like grandpa character where he's, ah, oh, Santa Claus, come around. Like <laughs> yeah. he's a little sneaky bastard. Yeah. Like he does, he, he, he keeps secrets a lot intentionally. Like he's, he's, he, he, you never really know what he's doing. He'll, he vanishes from the school and then comes back. Like, so there's always kind of this, this mystique. That's why it's interesting to see maybe where Jude Law's 
portrayal is going to go in those movies because it's fun. Like, yeah, what was he up to? What's yeah. going on between him and Grindelwald? Like, there's just a lot yeah. of secrecy behind him. I'm and so I, I like the. I think he does a good job of playing those. And he seems smart. And he what? he what? got to do the best. The you know the 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 peak of the character in the books. You know, on like, a scale of one to ten. Rapid fire, Jones. <laughs> what is your one to ten, really okay, quick? Okay. What is your hype level? Okay. For Avatar two. Oh, oof. Rapid six. fire. Six. Uh, Terminator Dark Fate. Like four. Fantastic Beasts three. Like three. Okay. We just keep going down. Okay, so uphill battles for these franchises. The, mo- the more, ex- <laughs> honestly, when I think about Fantastic Beasts, the most exciting thing I'm about, not to like name drop, but um, Dan Fogler, who's the uh, the muggle in that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know the character's name. He is uh, now on Walking Dead, and he's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Uh, went to college with my brother. He's really good friends with my brother. I've known awesome. him, I've known him for a very long time. He's a very fun guy. Uh, and that was um, yeah when he booked out. I was like, oh, so I'm like, I'm, I'm rooting for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and if I'm if that I'm that plot if I'm, line if was I'm, so weird. If I'm Fantastic Beasts two, so weird. If I'm watching, if I'm watching Fantastic Beasts movies, like, huh? Amanda's next to me, like, (laughs) how dare you? Anyway, do do we include J.K. Rowling spouting her mouth on on Twitter about random things that none of us need information or clarification on? Is that part of adaptation, or should we move on? Um, uh, How effective do you feel the performances are in this show in Game of Thrones? Morgan says, please correct me if I'm wrong, but does Sophie Turner, Sansa Stark provide the only poor performance on this show? Ooh, harsh. Whoa. Uh, I, wel- I mean, Dinklage's accent is terrible. So there's that. Uh, he I wel- needs the axe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's yeah, another adaptation. Uh, I welcome you as God was supposed to protect us. I welcome a different point of view. But in this show with such amazing talent, she pulls me out of every scene that I've ever seen her in. Sansa's a tough character. Uh, really tough. Because she's instantly unlikable you know like she's written for you to be like just get out of here Sansa but like that's kind of the point is that I, I think what Sansa represents is the the grooming yeah we see uh, Ramsey is kind of part of that you yep. know like Ramsey and his father have a very tight relationship and uh, uh, Jamie and his father there's all these expectations of like what are you supposed to be and she was raised being like okay well I'm I'm one of two sisters that you know and as w- women in this world we only have so much power and so um i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to pay attention in all my classes and i'm going to pick the right friends and i'm going to you know marry well if i can and and i'm going to do everything that i should do in in a lot of ways mirroring ned mirroring her dad like i want to find the right way to do this stuff i need to take this seriously mm-hmm. and aria is like complete yeah. opposite of that from as, from a child uh and i, I do kind of want to talk a little bit about season 1 i don't consider that spoilery if you're just getting started just kind of like where we where we are introduced to these characters so um i think Sophie, yeah, was kind of stuck in in being like, how do how do I explain? I haven't seen a lot of other stuff that uh, Sophie Turner's done, but um, so I think it's a t- I think it's a tough character to play. It's kind of like yeah. Sam Tarly. It's like yeah. intentionally a not a nothing character, but like a character who's not Dude, not expected to do a lot until <laughs> those pivotal moments. Until you can you know, and you can see them setting up that stuff. As frustrated as I get with Game of Thrones sometimes, where I'm just like, give this person a break just yeah. once. Yeah. It's like so satisfying. Yeah. Again, spoilers, end of the episode. So satisfying when it finally happens. Uh, the rewatch, I liked her a lot more. Mm. It's crazy how rewatching changes your perspective on things. Like the first, rewatching all of the, the Marvel first, movies. The first season is mind blowing. Yeah. Game of Thrones, to rewatch again. If, you, if you're if you're like, oh, I don't want to rewatch it all again, I don't have time. Yeah. Just do season one. Yeah. Just season one. Even if it's the first five episodes, yeah. you're like, if you're watching like, all the Marvel movies, I like, John Snow and Tyrion, like, hey, what are you reading? Like, a book about dragons. You're like, ah! You know, it's yeah. like, there's a lot, <laughs> totally. a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, um, like, wasn't too big on Tony Stark the first time I watched all the Marvel movies and then rewatched well, them all, and I was like, dude, Tony Stark is I mean, incredible. I mean, I hates Tony Stark. Dude, <laughs> she's so like, good. She's like, please let all the horrible things happen no to this way. human. Um, Such a... Uh, flawed human I love it um, but any any other performances that seemed weird any uh, it was interesting uh, interesting that they did the boy totally forget his name but uh, Daenerys' boyfriend they do the, the swap Dario. to the guy from Treme <laughs> Dario, Dario Naharis, Naharis where they the original was very much like he was in the book mm-hmm. he actually had like a blue goatee like yeah. very, there's a lot of really to talk about adaptations there's a lot of very strange there's tons and tons and tons of characters in the story in the book you can imagine so many more than are on the show and I think there's like a lot of character descriptions that the showrunners were like yeah that's okay. <laughs> you know, like yeah. they're reading Dario and be like, uh, we don't need to yeah. do that. Um, uh, only character 
in the entire series that is just so annoying because they're supposed to be uh-huh. is Littlefinger. Right, yeah. I'm just like, go away. <laughs> go away. Get off my TV. Just get off of it. Uh, yes, you must be paying attention at all times or you will be betrayed, but you must be the betrayer before you are betrayed. It's like, I'm go telling, away. I'm telling you, Amanda, uh, Amanda and I got in a spitting match go, over season one yeah. because I was like, I, why? Why, are, why do I care about this story now I that know. it's just sprinkling favor onto all of the characters I hate? Like, what is going on? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, you're yeah, supposed yeah. to. So he does well, they, yeah, a hell of a job. Like, you're not, like... you're, you know, a uh, ty- Tywin. Like, you're not you, supposed to like this guy. Yeah. But you find yourself kind of doing that. Totally. All, this, all, this, all the people that are still Cersei fans, you know, I'm like, yeah. oh, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough for me to root for that character. Cersei um, is is going down in the pantheon next to Voldemort, <laughs> next to Darth Vader, if you will. I know that's complicated, but well, she's Hannibal complicated. Lecter, too. They're all complicated. One of the greatest. There's no, there's no simple of villains of all time. You know, e- even the supernatural villains on the show, you know, yeah. or have some backstory. We're going to find out. Yeah. Um, uh, we we skipped past a couple of questions, but I think we've covered the stuff. What makes an adaptation good or bad? I think that's kind of yeah. the, the current of the of the show uh, or this episode. Yeah. Um, uh, what sorts of challenges does an adaptation face? We've talked about that. Does Game of Thrones have a formula? It's interesting. Um, I feel like these I mean, last yeah. couple seasons have really given some of the characters plot armor. You know, oh for sure. They used to yeah, be yeah, hacking yeah. No, them up are... left and right, and weird. Like going into this final season now, even. Yeah. It's at a point where I've completely flipped. It's like, oh, well, they can't kill that character. Oh, they can't kill it. Because yeah. they're so sa- they're, they're in such a safe place, yeah. even though the stakes are the highest they've ever been. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping now, of course, now we're in the final season, so really the shackles have come off. It's been interesting to see the, the gore and the nudity toned back. Good. You know, well, remember season one? Like, yeah, you back to season one, and it's just like full frontals all over the yeah. place. Yeah, and they, you know, they got views, but then I think they, as they dialed it back, they realized like, oh, okay, we can still do well, that. It's still gonna be a power. part of it, but like, uh, yeah, I guess. And yeah. like, and they're like, you know, but um, it's not necessarily something that we need to do. I think the the thing that's fascinating about the books, as I mentioned, is you know, it feels like you're reading a, a history of Westeros, not necessarily like a, a like a soap opera. Yeah, and. Um, which is why, like, all of those horrifying moments, like, are so shocking when they happen. Um, but what's also really fascinating about this is there's a lot of. Um, I don't consider this spoilery because if you if you if you don't watch Game of Thrones, you know there's, there are dragons. <laughs> there are dragons <laughs> on this on this television program. Yes. And there's a really great scene that's not in the, the not in the show where uh, there's I believe it's called Dragon's Fire. It's the green stuff, the really volatile uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. fuel, and. Uh, they can they can make it, but they used to make it a lot faster. They're like they're like it just uh, alchemically it, it uh, um, we could we could yield more whenever we would create it when there used to be dragons, and then when dragons died and were wiped off of the earth, which happens before any of this the story begins in Game of Thrones, uh, it became became tougher to make it. They're like thing is, uh, it's easy to make it again, <laughs> and like the like like the gar- the the people in like King's Landing are like and and he's like well you know one would conclude. That that means that there are dragons again, and they're like, there are no dragons. Get out of here! And they're like, are you sh- okay, I'll just, all right, I'm just asking. Yeah. And it's, so it's neat to see other worlds being like, what's going on? Did you hear about this? And yeah. so uh, one of the things that I'm terrible at, that Amanda's really good at, um, there's a great one with Tyrion in the later uh, books, um, where because each of the uh, the chapters in the books are based on a character. So it'll you know the next chapter will be like chapter four, Cersei. And you're like, okay, and it's just Cersei, everything from her perspective. So characters will come and go that you know, but she doesn't. And so there, that you have to really be paying attention to like, oh, oh, like George R. R. Martin just told us something huge, yeah. but Cersei didn't, you know? And so uh, with the show, you can't necessarily do that. And so, uh, like I said, because you're, you know, I feel like with the show, it's, it's just like, you know, if they could change the name, it should be who's going to die next. So that's kind of like one of the major thing that people are hanging on. People, people that hate the show are just yeah. like, I have to know what happens to this yeah. damn character. Who's going to die? And I don't really get that sense from the book because it's so meaty, because there's so much stuff going on in this world, so much political intrigue that doesn't necessarily amount to anything, but it's just fascinating in its own right. Yeah. And the show doesn't have time for that. And so I think now that we're getting into the later seasons, they're playing to their strengths. They're realizing, you know, seeing these 
t- people team up, yeah. seeing characters meet each other that haven't met each other this entire time. That's the that's the the gold. Yeah. That that's the the that's what's really going to add flavor. That's what's going to keep people are coming back. Yeah. That's what we've been waiting. But that's why it whole felt, time to do. That's, that's why yeah. rewatching it kind of felt like like I was saying earlier, just like wink wink. Right. You know, hey, these characters are meeting. It's it's just felt a little. Dude, oh, weird. season eight is gonna reek of that. Yeah. It just is time. It's time to just do everything. You know, yeah. every it's gonna be the end of uh, uh, Blaze of Glory, man. It's gonna be the end of Young Guns, just again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> Tokyo Slim. Whether Game of Thrones is not a faithful adaptation, it should be more like the film adaptation. Oh, this, this is worth talking about. Nick Cage plays George R. R. Martin, who's working through intense writer's block, trying to finish the last few episodes of the show. He realizes that there's no satisfying ending to the story, and that anything he writes will be unsurprising and cliche, or rely on cheap theatrics given the scrutiny his writing has been under for the past decade. George R. R. Martin has an existential crisis and writes himself yeah. the story into the final act of the show. His angst is compounded by uh, when his more socially confident twin brother, William R. R. Martin, also played by Nick Cage, <laughs> writes a salacious and crude Game of Thrones fanfic, and it gets picked up on Spec Ops option for a million dollars by HBO as the basis of a spin-off <laughs> series. Trying to beat his writer block, Gurm attends a Spike Jones story writing conference in New York, and in a fit of inspiration, he decides to bring Sean Bean back as a White Walker for the finale. <laughs> so he travels to Florida to bring to meet up with Sean Bean, played by Chris Cooper, to t- talk him into coming back to the show. He finds Sean Bean in the midst of a drug-fueled Florida con affair with Lady Catelyn Stark, Michelle Fairley, played by Tilda Swinton, and both of them, in order to keep Gurm from telling the world that what he saw, chase him through the swamp and try to kill him. But then Sean Bean gets by an alligator, Sean Bean, and gets eaten by an alligator, and and uh, William R. R. Martin dies, saving Gurm's life from a predator log trap. Lady Stark, someone had time, uh, a predator log trap. Lady Stark somehow had time to make Predator the movie. See the ending. Spoilers. Uh, she gets arrested and goes to jail, and Gurm attends his twin brother's funeral and then sits down to finish the last episode of Game of Thrones. The book slams shut, and an elderly D.B. Weiss tells his sick grandson, David Beinhoff, that he'll come back and read some more tomorrow. Uh, you see the book is titled The Princess Bride. The end. Wow. Tokyo Slim going off. Wow. Wow. Uh, but yeah, the, the yeah, it's interesting because the film adaptation is, is kind of about that, is like yeah. how close... Should I, you know, should I have fun with this, or should you have fun with this, or should yeah. we try to both and, and find I don't a common ground here? George R. R. Martin right now, so much pressure, uh, so much yeah, yeah, pressure, but, no, dude. dude There's the I, weight of the world on your shoulders. But he wanted that weight. Why are you writing books? Why are you creating this world if you're like you're afraid it'll pick up? I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand. I mean, if and, if, and dude, hold me to hold me to this. Yeah. If Easy Allies one day has five million subscribers on YouTube and we are larger than life, and I'm like, yeah. the work. You know, call me out on it. You know, I mean, because if, it's if like why not? <laughs> if Weiss and, and Benioff or whatever are probably like friendly dudes yeah. they meet Martin right. and they have like a nice friendly conversation mm-hmm. hey like we want to yeah. we want to adapt this like let's let's do this and Martin's probably like yeah I like you guys sure let's do it right yeah well, I don't have any and then with the that. show becomes like a worldwide phenomenon the right. books were never that big mm-hmm now there's like way more pressure. How can you hold him? You release a public statement and you say, I'm just not going to write the next ones. I'm out. And then I'd be like, I have he so is, much respect though. for that. He's working on it. Slow and steady, Jones. I know it hurts. I know. But give the man a break. Like, and I don't, the pressure yeah. before the show I'm not, versus I'm now. I'm not writing this man mail. Totally. I'm not going after him on social yeah. media. I don't condone, you know, like, you know, hating on this guy. Of course. Of like, course. I, I, of course. I have the utmost respect for artists to do whatever they want to do with their own art. <laughs> yeah. As an artist myself, I value that freedom. I value that that yeah. control. It's just, it's, it's. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like that. I've never gotten through something because it's always like an untimely death or a, some weird court case or something yeah. that like prohibits the artist from even doing that. Oh, I'd love to go back to that story, but yeah. I can't, you know, Joss Whedon season two of Firefly. Like, you don't think I'd love to do that? <laughs> yeah. Like I had to write a comic book instead. <laughs> but with this, it's like you get, you get to, you know, yeah. you have the world in front of you and you palm your hand. Yeah. Too much like, pressure now to release it. Oh sure. Oh yeah. I don't envy that. I certainly yeah. don't envy him trying to, you know, trying to figure that out. But it'll be especially if he's like, yeah, they made some decisions on I, that show. I will. That I, I, I will say, have. working on other books and stuff. In the meantime, he's like, hey, I'm releasing like this book about the history. Like, that's a little weird. <laughs> You know, they, yeah. <laughs> uh, I bet they, that took a while. Yeah, he's too. released a lot of different stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you know Patrick Rothfuss. He actually streams mm-hmm. games a lot, but he wrote a book series called um, The King Killer Chronicles, I believe. The first one's called Name of the Wind, and there's a third one that 
and the guy's like streaming on Twitch all the time and his chat is just like, finish the book. Yeah. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, let the guy, let the guy enjoy his life. Yeah. Um, uh, which episodes had exemplary direction? I mean, every everyone that was a fight, I suppose. Like, I can't. Yeah. That's a tough thing. Shout it's out like to Neil Marshall. For episodes, sure. like, I don't know. Oh, the specific ne- episodes? Yeah, I remember scenes a lot, but. Uh, Neil Marshall, the, uh, um, uh, the battle at King's Landing, mm-hmm. of course. and Battle the, of the Blackwater. Uh, uh, battle of the Blackwater and mm-hmm. the Battle at the Wall, both directed by Neil Marshall of the Descent fame. Uh, you know, they they brought him in for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, yeah. It's, it's hype when you hear he's been attached. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, that's so, that's the one to tune in for. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. What's your favorite episode? You can't just say like S five E four and then the title. Uh. Again, I don't like. Honestly, episodes are not standing out in my brain, and that used to aggravate me when I would ask people about the books. I'd be like, Oh, what book are we on right now? They're like, Dude, I don't even remember, man. They're like, The books just bleed oh, together, and I'm like, And I'm like, How can you say that? And like, I get it now. Now that I've like read five books, it's like I couldn't tell you. I'll tell you because we jump. <laughs> All right. I might start weeping though. All right. The door. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people made fun of that. A lot of people were like, that was so silly. And I'm like, there's there's the door. <laughs> what? I, yeah. Oh, come on. You you read you more YouTube comments and 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 get emotionally crushed by social media more than I do, and you didn't pick up on any of that? No. Oh yeah. People were like, what? What was I that? I probably I, w- I was in seclusion for a while after that episode. Because and... the actual the 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 process of the scene, the way it was portrayed. They were like, that was very silly. And I was like, that that crushed me. <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah. like yeah. Oh God. Especially yeah. because that's a good example of for anybody that's on the forum, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, just kind of like, all right, move past that conversation, guys. Yeah. But if anybody does know, like that, that has not happened in the books. Like that was oh. a, that was a major like, oh, oh. oh. because that's a, that's a, the double whammy. That's I learned something about the character. I learned something that just happened now. I learned yeah. something that happened in the past. You know, I learned, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like that's a that's a yeah that's a uh, grand slam home run that moment. Yeah. yeah. Good pick. And uh, and though the battle at uh, the wall. I think is actually my favorite battle. I kind of like it maybe more than Battle of the Bastards. Um, there's just because because it's the uh, the feeling of people on opposite sides that you care about. Uh-huh. On, you care about people on both sides. And we're getting that at that point. Yeah. And and that every time they're, <laughs> you're just like stop, no, please stop, please. Yeah. Whereas Battle of the Bastards, you're like clearly one side. Let's yeah. go win, win, win. Yeah. But it's it's the conflict. Yeah. Oh. Um, which sequences were especially well shot? Uh, as long as we're talking about bastards, mm-hmm. uh, the one spinning Jon Snow shot of just him in the middle of that field with horses. Yeah. You're like, huh? Yeah. Because it's one thing. W- what I truly appreciate with good cinematography and special effects, staging what seems to be the impossible, yeah. is it, there, there's there's some period. I don't mean to be a snob, but like I'm a film major. I watch a lot of movies, and so like I I I t- I, I try to take pride in when I can tell an effect as an effect when I can be like, ah, okay, I see how you did this. It's hilarious to go back to 90s movies now and they're just like, CG, CG solves everything. Um, going back and watching Godzilla, like, <laughs> but uh, um, I see that shot and I, I don't, I, I, I feel like a, a wee babe, you know, in yeah. my crib weeping with a pacifier in my mouth. I'm like, I don't know how any of this happened. Oh, yeah. I have no, I don't know what horse is real. I don't know what actors are real. I don't know what weapons are real. I have no idea what the hell I'm looking at right now. Do you now. know the behind the scenes nugget of that? I've scene seen too? it. I've forgotten it since. Just the, the one little, the one thing I know about it is that they were trying to do more with that entire battle. They had this whole big plan and they ran out of time and it all fell apart and they were just like, all right, let's just change it and do this and do this. Like it just came together last minute. Whoa. They had a whole thing they were doing and they were just like, ah, it's not gonna work, let's just try this, I guess. Yeah. And it paid off. <laughs> and that's the thing, and that's the reason why I cannot believe we're getting Endgame and Game of Thrones at the same time. Because <laughs> as far as television and film and is concerned, gone, baby. it's the mo- <laughs> Get what? <laughs> Adapt- adaptations, bro. Oh, yeah, okay. And dreams. And, okay, okay. You know, yeah. And Easter, I guess. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just want to give you some hype, dude. <laughs> just trying to feed you, Jones. It's just these two, the most ambitious, what do you think they're good or not? The most ambitious television adaptation and the most ambitious film adaptation that have, has ever yeah, been achieved. I still, I'm Even weird. something like D- Bond, you, you just kind of knock it to the side because no Bond ever made it farther than like eight movies, yeah. you know? And it's you like, keep, you keep it's bringing 10 up. years of film, like... 
you, 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 keep, you, keep, you keep bringing up the Endgame as like an adaptation and stuff. Yeah. But for me, the entire MCU is its own entity. But that, that was I, the that was the decision. Yeah. Again, it's it is. I bit, never think it, it's of it based as on the adapt- Ultimates. If you yeah. go back and you read the Ultimates, it was around 2003 or something totally. like that. They rebooted everything. They rebooted X Men and Spider Man yeah. and and all of that. And like a lot of this comes from that. Yeah. Uh, that's when Nick Fury. Nick Fury says in the Marvel comics, somebody asks him, "Hey, if they made a movie, who would play you?" And he's like, "Samuel Jackson." And like <laughs> so, like they're they, like it, they they kind of laid the blueprint for like how yeah. they were you know what what uh, a good way to do it. Uh, Winter Soldier, like all that like. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I, I think, w- it, and it's interesting. It kind of mirrors Game of Thrones, where like a lot of it was kind of rooted in those original comics, kind of in their current state. Like we're telling stories that people were familiar with, mm-hmm. and then now that we're getting to like Civil War and Infinity War. I remember Civil War. I was kind of upset at the time because Civil War in the comics is oh my, mwah, is yeah. just beautiful and has so many more character waspas in it, and all yeah. there's just so many more characters involved, and so much so like so many incredible dramatic things happen. And by the time they got there in the movies, they were like, we just have our own little hordance nest, but we're still going to make it make sense. We're actually still going to tie it into everything. Yeah. Um, fans, you know, comic fans are going to be pissed because it, it's very different from the civil war of the comics. Yeah. It actually being attached to Cap in general. Like technically it's a Captain America movie. Yeah. Um, and eventually now getting to Infinity War, it's like it's almost, you know, unrecognizable from like what you do in the comics. But it's kind of where we are with Game of Thrones. Like we're so off the rails. Yeah. But they're like, we if we're going to take it this far and spend this much money and try to keep these actors and keep these directors and keep these showrunners happy this entire time, yeah. this is the way we have to do it, you know. And so... A lot of times when I see criticisms of Game of Thrones, it's just like, how did you think it was going to go? Like, how? Like, what are you comparing this to? You know, yeah. it's just nothing. Nothing has been attempted nothing. to this scale. And so, yeah, when I think of the costumes and the cinematography and the special effects, it's like even when I've seen something that I laughed at, even when I see an accent that's really weird or an actor that changes for no reason, yeah. it's like, here we go. This is this yeah. wacky roller coaster that we're on. You know, and and for every time, it's just like, yeah, three people have played. Who's the eye patch guy with the flaming Barrett. sword? Uh, yeah, Beric Dondarrion, like I think three different people yeah. have played him. Like, uh, even with all of these crazy changes, like <laughs> Tyrion was straight up blonde in season one. And then yeah. they were just like, no, no. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> no. you look ridiculous. Stop it. Yeah. Um, I think even during season one, it like <laughs> became brown. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just so impressed just to the, the size and the scale of everything they're doing. For it all of those issues, man. for all of those issues that are so off, you see like Bran then and now mm-hmm. and it's like it's so hard not to be emotionally see Arya growing up see John growing up and just like oh god ten out of ten. these human beings have been yeah. through so much Brienne of Tarf like ah like, has there ever been uh, higher stakes for a finale uh not for me personally like may- not even may- back. maybe quantum leap <laughs> supernatural super high stakes yeah sure well I mean we've, yeah not even close to that this is it the final yeah. season uh unless you just consider season five the actual end of that show um um what if? Uh, how effective do you feel the performances are in the show? We talk about acting. We talk about uh, so Sansa effective. a little bit. Oh yeah. my god! The aging, and again, the time that they get. And what's really interesting with the writing is there's a lot of scenes that, like, I can imagine the writers looking at the book and being like, "All right, this is, you know, eighty pages," mm-hmm. and the the. The show's a little snarkier than the books, and the snark is kind of the solve for that. Like yeah. they're, they're the solution. Sorry, Ian. Uh, they'll they'll have like a whole paragraph that's a beautiful sentiment, like just really, really great. Gurm writes these characters very, very well and and very differently. Uh, but they'll look at something and it's just like, how do I sum that up in a sentence? Yeah. You know, and it's usually a joke. It's usually like the character looking back and just saying something, you know, the, you know, about themselves or something, just, just, just being very crass about yeah. something because to kind of comment on the brevity of it, they're like, I know this doesn't necessarily sum it up, but it, I, you know, look at the time. Um, so that's really interesting. And what are great, great adaptations? What are bad adaptations? Those are all of the, the questions provided to us by Mr. Ian Hank. John Snow. Here in. 10 out of 10. Yeah. And not that great of an actor, I think, when it started. You know, oh, has become. Just, and certainly does uh, not have the chops that yeah. he has now. You know, when when the whole thing started. And I love that. Theon, like, I love oh, that even man. like in real life that is the case. He got better, but then in the show too, it's like he had to be better and more of a. You know, mm-hmm. it, it translates like when he needs to take charge. Yeah, his acting like gets better. He's like, all right, I'm doing this now. Like Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. Like like you know the 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 fourth fifth movie. You're like, oh. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. Here we go. And yep. then by the time that the, all the resolutions happen, he's yep. like, I can act now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tokyo Explosion. Hey guys, I would like to say that Game of Thrones is, for the most part, a successful adaptation of the source material, but that it has spe uh, specific challenges that have become more pronounced since season five. An example of excellent adaptation of the show is Arya being Tywin Lannister's cupbearer at Harrenhal in season two, which does not happen in the books. Oh. And that was one of those things, yeah, I mean, and I were like, was the best. we were like, what are you doing? Because it's, but I think that's the, the one thing that, um, the cost, I think, that you uh, uh, you have to pay is that it makes Tywin look a little dumb, that he doesn't know, you know? True. Tywin is so far ahead of everybody, man. True. There's so many times in that story when it's been revealed, like, whoa, whoa, for Tywin to pull that off, he, he must have started that like five years ago, and he's just, he just knows. And he, yeah. and like, and he would not bat an eye at just wiping Star Arya out. And so yeah. it was like, she was under such danger that like, I, I, as much as I love Arya's storyline because uh, um, I think the, the acting has done so well and the characterization is, is so fascinating, man, she has been through the ringer and all over the world, is there's sometimes where they're like, and then Arya was amazing, moving on. And I'm like, wait, how, how, you know, like, I want, I love, the show? I love heist movies. I love to see how stuff happens. Yeah. You know, oh, and, and dude, all of a sudden she's just like careful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it happened some, really fast. Especially some of the later steps are just like, and she's amazing now. And it's for like, sure. for sure, I don't, I didn't feel that moment of her making that, making that, uh, that jump. I agree. Um, but uh, in the books, she serves Roose Bolton in the same role. But mixing of characters in the show let both Arya and Tywin have some of the best acted, intense scenes in the show to date, as well as push the story forward in a logical way based on the framework of the books. A poor example of adaptation, and a popular one to point out is Sansa's marriage to Ramsay in the fallout thereafter. I didn't have the emotional reaction that many did to the storyline, but ended up feeling that it didn't serve what actually happened in the books and didn't work as a storyline in the show either. A lot a lot of the things that the, the series does too, and it just seems like a natural fit, Harry Potter, totally guilty of this, I guess, if you could, you know, if that word is fair, is, oh, that scene happened with random character we don't have time to do. Let's we'll just fold it swap in. in that character. Yeah. Uh, one of my least favorite books uh, moments in the Harry Potter series, which I don't feel so is some bad spoilering, is, uh, I believe, in Order of the Phoenix. Uh, and it's when they knock down the wall of the room of requirement, which is impossible. You can't do that. Like, <laughs> and it's it's the story's way of being like, we don't have time. And but they uh, they make Cho Chang the one that comes out and actually kind of betrays Harry in a weird mm -hmm. way. And it was her friend in the books. Yeah. And so it was again just another character. We we don't have time for her. And we'll just make it Cho. And then it's like, well, wait a minute, that changes a lot. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes uh, you you sacrifice a little bit by doing that. Um, that was a. Uh, that was for you. I don't remember specifically who made the comments about spoilers. There you go. Yeah, there there's you a couple. Go. Foo -foo. <laughs> Some old movies. <laughs> five years have definitely passed since then. I didn't have the. Um, uh, since season five, the show's had trouble more often than before in adaptation because there just isn't anything to adapt besides bullet points from George. While it is e easy to, to critique the show, the showrunners on what they should or shouldn't be doing in their own adaptation of the material, they also didn't sign up to finish this George's story for him. Uh, I bet they hoped though. Yeah. Uh, additionally, I'm sure it's crushing for George to have a story get away from him. It is not. It is not that man does not look crushed i don't think he's crushed I bet that he, he is. can't finish i don't i i with every fiber of my being down in my core i don't say that in anger i don't yeah. say that in resentment uh i just yeah i just don't based on uh, the decisions he's made and just his kind of attitude about the whole thing um that's that's the attitude he's giving off but on the inside i he, bet he's, he's hurting wedding and hurting All right. that this show is bigger than like he is in a way like it's not the ego or like the pride of it all but yeah. it's just like wow this has become I think, so I think it'll be big. really I think it'll be a very interesting moment in media when if it happens he's like and book six and everyone's like I don't care <laughs> you know they're like you know and you're like ah yeah. Stannis <laughs> you know it's like whoa yeah. <laughs> we gotta go back yeah you know like okay right where were we right okay and the, oh and that was happening in Essos and those characters were never yeah. in the show right that's the thing is is that I felt <laughs> like there was a fever for show watchers to like oh when it's all over I'm gonna go back and read it but in like I was definitely on that camp, but now I'm like so exhausted through yeah. it all. It's like, I don't really want to this, this, this new show that we're getting, like all the yeah. new Game of Thrones offshoots, I'm fully expecting 100%. We're talking about expectations and adaptations. Mm -hmm. Where my expectations are are, are laying in concrete and yeah. steel yeah. is that he's just going to move on to these shows and that's it. He's mm -hmm. just going to, ne we're never getting six and seven. He's just going to work on TV. Yeah. Uh, I just wish he would let us know. Uh, and it's also interesting that it, you know, like we know that he's given them bullet points, but we don't really specifically, it'd be interesting for every now and then for him to pop out and be like that one that was me <laughs> you know like yeah. that that does happen and like oh okay yeah um because i think he has said somebody asked him once they were like do you think this is going to spoil your books and he's like no and it's like how can you not think yeah. that 
<laughs> but it's so obvious that it will. Yeah. Like he doesn't think he doesn't. He's like, oh, no, I trust my readers. I don't think this is going to mess in their with their minds at all. And it's just like that's yeah. a it's a bold take. Um, I mean, it has to be different, right? With all the plot lines that have been. I think what becomes out. apparent when looking at the show up to this point is that Dave and Dan are really quite good at adaptation. But when the material ran out or they blasted through it too quick, the quality of the show took a dip. I hope some of this is what you were looking for. Question mark, love I respect. love oh, season yeah. six. I think it's just a different show. Season six is incredible. It's just different. And you can especially tell that moment, like I said, when they hit the gas. Yeah. Uh, if you've if you've read the book. I think season six is incredible. I think season seven was very much, we want to do more than we can because it's not the final season yet. Yeah. Now, yeah. again, final season. Everything is fair game. Yeah. I, I, I got... There's yeah. I there's even so. there's even one episode I have a, like a love hate relationship with. That's probably the most pivotal episode. I think it might be the last one of like mm-hmm. the last season. Yeah. No spoilers at all. Yeah. A lot of big shit happens, and yeah. there's a lot of the teleporting where you're just like, wait, how did how did you get to what? Like yeah. in a day? In yeah. less than a day? And then you came back? What? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like I'm so glued to these people. I'm so glued to the show. I'm so you know when you see a character slip and like oh you know, yeah no. Um, uh, that uh, yeah, it's so I I am critical of it, but I I would still if you put it on right now I would watch and cry <laughs> you know like I'd be I'd be immersed there's nothing I can do. Uh, just a couple questions left. Michael Brigham, uh, Stephen King adaptations are notorious. Oh yeah, let's talk about King just for a second. Are notorious for their poor quality with the new Pet Cemetery unfortunately adding to the list. Uh, oh, yeah, but I heard Frank, it's pretty awesome. I've heard, yeah, mixed things. Uh, Dark Tower, though. I've heard bad things about Dark Tower. Uh, But Frank Darabont somehow managed to buck the trend with Shawshank Redemption and The Green Mile are gross, uh, the gross, and the grossly underrated The Mist. Darabont managed to not only accurately adapt, but improve upon the stories they were based on. I think all those stories, Shawshank and Green Mile were like short stories. And so they were, a Green Mile was like episodic. Green Mile's weird. Mm. Um, But uh, uh, yeah, those were very, Shawshank is extreme, very different. Um, Yeah. Uh, even Lawnmower Man was originally a Stephen King story. Very different. Um, uh, unlike with Kubrick's The Shining, which is almost entirely different from the book, Darabont worked with King to produce the best version of the story they were adapting. I think Game of Thrones succeeds, at least in part, for the same reason. Uh, yeah, where are you at with King? Have you ever read King? You're... Not really, no. Uh, tried to read The Shining and just like put it down. Like Couldn't get through it. Oh, yeah. It's so good. I know, I know. Um, Specifically, if you have seen the film The Shining and you have seen the miniseries The Shining, you still need to read the book. Yeah. It's still, especially like the I last bit of that story is oh, is so uh, read it so like horrifying. so long ago, barely yeah, 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 remember. Yeah, me like, too. Very young, very young. Yeah, it. way too young. What the hell was I doing? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this thing. yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'm like so biased so i'll take kubrick over anyone anytime i mean it was a, it was a choice you know <laughs> yeah. and like and i don't know like there there's there is a part of me like savagely that does get kind of a sadistic pleasure out of one artist like stealing someone else's art yeah. and making their own thing because Stephen King is an incredible writer, one of the best writers ever. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick is one of the best filmmakers ever. Yep. And so it's like, I appreciate The Shining for what it is. There were a lot of really weird choices made. Surprisingly for Kubrick, there were a lot of choices made. The Axe is one example. In the, the miniseries gets it right. Uh, and in the book, it's a croquet mallet. And you think of an axe, like, yeah, but an axe is so much scarier. I'm, not, I, I'm here to tell you that an axe is the wrong choice. I'm sorry, <laughs> Huber. But like, it seems like it's an obviously scary thing. But like, there's something, I don't know, kind of like unsettling, unsettling about a croquet, about a croquet mallet, mallet. unsettling sure. about something that like, I can't kill you with one swing. Yeah. You know, like I got to keep hitting you with this, totally. you know, like you're not, you're not scared of like the errant swing that might cause you to lose blood. I'm going to beat you to death with this. Yeah. And so it's like, and especially in the end when, when, you know, uh, Torrance just loses it, just this image of this guy. When, when Danny sees him, like in the book, he almost describes it as like a phantom. He's like, I didn't even see my dad anymore. Like, I don't even know who this is. This guy just like, <gasps> just like slamming the mallet like all on the walls and running around the hotel it's just like ah it's creepy um it's the but best. um i love it i love it. it it's interesting to see i didn't know that like i i remember like having read the book before i saw kubrick's movie not chronologically because i was born after that movie came out yeah. but i grew up and then was like old and, and i think also like as a kid it was easier to like sneak a, my mom would see me reading a book and be like oh. yeah you know it was like this is a rated r book mom whereas yeah. like if she saw me popping in a vhs copy of the shining she'd be like wait no you're, you're too young for this like <laughs> i i never ever want to read 2001 because sure. the, the story behind that is that Clark and Kubrick were developing the movie and the book at the same time in parallel. And 
the book just gives you definitive answers to uh-huh. things. Yeah. And it's like, no, thank you. Sure. No, thanks. Uh, it's I don't want to bring that into the movie. Lost World's interesting because doesn't Goldblum's character die in Jurassic Park? I don't in know. the book? I think he I does. Know. I think Ian Malcolm doesn't make it out of Jurassic Park. Oh, and now he's like the, the franchise face. Of course. Face. And then in the, in the Lost World, the book, <laughs> yeah. uh, Michael Crichton was like, Whoop. and just put it back in and people were like what and it was, it was clearly like after the popularity of Jurassic Park and he was like oh shit yeah. I messed up like yeah. I killed the wrong character that's so funny um, uh, Caesar Avila when talking about great adaptations a few come to mind the first one is Forrest Gump yeah uh, a highly acclaimed movie that won the Oscar for best adapted screenplay then again how can I champion it when I haven't read the book that it's based on a fun adaptation thing Forrest Gump uh, I have not read Forrest Gump but I remember at the time there were like those snooty books you know people that were like he's actually really uh, uh, overweight in the books that's mm-hmm. like part of his uh, you know part of why people don't take him seriously part of why you know his uh, um, you know how he's debilitated in a lot of ways uh, part of why it's like tough for him you know and and uh, uh when he's in war you know and like yeah. carrying people he has strength but he doesn't run that fast um so let's move on another one is fight club which to be honest i consider it better than the book itself i have not read fight club i've always been very curious to do that uh they just took the blueprint and built upon it making it better the third and final one is scott pilgrim versus the world nice. great film overall and very true to the source material it embraces its graphic novel roots by showing some sound cues on screen but adds its own stuff that mimics and makes fun of the movie and tropes itself a fantastic adaptation yeah uh do you have any highlights scott, scott pilgrim, pilgrim? I, I just watched it again the recently, game? and it the video game that movie is so damn funny. Uh, um, I haven't seen it since the theater, honestly. I my two my two favorite moments are uh, this one time he's trying to avoid this uh, character, and she comes to the door, and they they frame the, his apartment where when you open up the door, you can see this tiny window in the corner whenever yeah. he opens up the door, and he's like, "Who is it?" And then like Kieran Culkin like opens up the door and Scott torpedoes through this window. Like it's clearly a dummy. Like it's yeah. clearly they like, like like had a spring on a dummy aimed right at there and he just supermans like through this window so fast. Kills me every single time I see it. And I love, um, I don't know which, I, I wish I remember what sound, I think it's a Nintendo sound effect but it might be the Windows like error sound effect. Yeah. But it's the, the drummer who used to be in a relationship with, um, uh, Scott and it's at the end when Scott like realizes everything that he's done wrong and he tells her he's like I'm sorry I was an asshole or, or he says to her and he's apologizing to everyone and he's like and you and she goes Burr. she like like looks at him like what's this gonna be and this is the sound effect like wait a minute and like I just left I've I, it's hard to point to another film that's done that, you know, yeah. like it's, it's kind of like a modern naked gun. It's, it's, it's a really great, like Good you can point. enjoy it, but you know, make fun of it at the same time. I, I remember not liking the ending and then I just watched it again recently and it's like, this whole movie is pretty great. Like yeah. it's, it's just very fun. And so, and a great example, I think of something where you can appreciate, cause I could see people being like, I love Scott Pilgrim. I love the direction. I just hate Michael Sarah. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, th- those are two very different things. Like yeah. you can, it's, to me, the movie is, is very much like we know we're a movie like we know we can't we don't look anything like these characters like you just kind of have to be along for the ride uh fight club very good um uh de- haven't read the book but very much enjoyed that and i, I was definitely the nerd I've, I've i've changed my mind now but i was definitely the nerd at the time that thought forrest gump was better than pulp fiction i was wrong but <laughs> i was young i was foolish um but um yeah forrest gump really good i love that uh, the kid in forrest gump uh, apparently, uh, Tom Hanks just based the whole character off the kid. Whoa! The younger version of him, Forrest, Forrest Gump. Yeah. Like, is this seat taken? Like that? Uh, he just showed up and like that's the kid's natural speaking voice. And Tom Dang. Hanks was like, "Do you mind if I borrow that? Like, <laughs> uh, do you mind if I take the Oscar? Thanks, kid." <laughs> yeah. Um, Seriously. But uh, yeah, fun adaptation. Thank you for the suggestions and apologies. I'm sure there's like a billion adaptations that we're not getting. Die to. Hard. I'm gonna. Is uh, that a book? It's a book first. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Whoa! Is that yeah. a Christmas book? I, oh my gosh. Yep, it's a book. It's Die Hard a Christmas book. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what section is that book in? Oh my god. Damn. Wow. What are some other uh just 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 Dick stick ball before we were getting near the end of this episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that very fun adaptation. Love there's no blood in that movie. Really? Yeah. Tons of people die. Not a drop of blood. Anywhere. Who is that the whole giant dude with the wrench? 
Wait, is that? Am I thinking of Rocketeer? Rocketeer where's okay. the rocket? <laughs> on. Yeah. Guy gives me <laughs> the creeps every time. Terrified me as Rocketeer. a kid. Rocketeer. Oh, is that great. an adaptation? I believe so. I don't think I feel it like was. It is. I don't think it was a comic book. I think it was a. Dude, a, a I gotta serial. watch the Rocketeer again, Joe. The Rocketeer holds it's up. It's time, dude. Rocketeer holds up, man. When Paul Servino and uh, the head, the FBI, when like the the mob and the FBI are shooting the Nazis together, and they turn yeah. to look at each other and are like, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> great moment, great moment. Yes. Um, um, Alton O'Connell, just a quick comment uh, to give a shout out to Scott Pilgrim versus the world, nice. a pitch per- perfect adaptation and a wonderful film. And finally, Patton Werner, I believe the greatest challenge, apologies to any comments that might have gotten deleted or they skipped. Uh, I believe the greatest challenge in adapting material, especially from book to screen, is broadening the audience. The fans of each medium are critical of the work for very different reasons, making it very difficult to have such successful adaptations like Game of Thrones. Books have a much more intimate relationship with their readers than films with their viewers, and distilling the book while keeping its core theme intact results in more failures than successes but those that succeed do so because they were blindly faithful to the pages themselves but the uh not the uh not be, not because they were blindly faithful to the pages themselves, but the themes of the pages. Jurassic Park comes to mind as a very successful adaptation that is wildly different from the book, but because the themes are so well preserved, it works beautifully. Yeah, um, I like that. And it's it, it, and, and we talk about cost a little bit, and I think it's interesting. I felt that way with Game of Thrones, where there were just all these you know, anytime Peter Baelish was on screen, just boobs were, were were coming and you know, right behind him. And I remember like kind of joking at that, but thinking like, hey, whatever it takes, you know, like. I'm stoked to get this. I want to see, especially after reading the books, like I really want to see where this plays out. Like yeah. when they when they cast like the Vipers, like here we go. Yeah. You know, like you imagine knowing all of that, like before yeah. that season, yeah. knowing like the Vipers arc and all Crazy. of this stuff and just being like, here we go, seeing that actor and be like, yes, yes, this yep. is going to be good. Um, Black Sails did something similar where it was like a <laughs> lot of nudity in the very beginning. Uh-huh. And then it's like, all right, we're picked up for like yeah. another season. Let's cut that back a little bit. And I think as uh, I, I think Game of Thrones actually has, probably has an interesting mix because the, you, the kids come in, they love the violence, they love the intrigue, the sexiness to it, which there still is a substantial amount. Like there still mm-hmm. is a fair amount of nudity on the show. And but then you have the older set who are like, ah, yes, this, fi-, you know, like I love a good history, yeah. you know. And so it's like it, it does kind of appeal to a mass audience, which I think is is it should play to and I think is smart. And so anytime you see a sacrifice made for the sake of doing something that a lot of people are going to like, I don't get frustrated at those things because I'm like, whatever it takes, man. Just cash whatever checks you need to cash. Well said. uh, Because it's so cool. Uh, uh, um, You know, uh, Marvel, you know, with movies. Like, I actually, uh, there are like, I think Thor Ragnarok could do with like 15 less jokes. Like, if they, I think they say Asgard is a place, not as its people, not a place. Like, (laughs) Five too many times. Like there's, a, I have lots of critiques of that show, of that movie, but I love that that movie exists. I love what it did and how it it made Thor great again. It how it tied all of these characters back together. Uh, it's such a showpiece for so many great moments, like the relationship now between the Collector and uh, Jeff Goldblum's character. Like uh, when you go on the uh, what used to be the Twilight Zone ride at Disneyland, there's a great painting of them playing like some some game. Nice and like. Uh, um, uh, the collector's like, oh, no, uh, Goldblum's character's like, ah! and he's like smacking the board <laughs> off the table, and the collector's like, ha, 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 like laughing at him, and it's like, yes, I love that. Like how many actors have been brought into this world. Yeah. So yeah, those sacrifices when those are made, like I appreciate it because uh, you need to do it. Like you need to to, and that's again why Game of Thrones I think is so impressive because it's still around. It never, it didn't yeah. get canceled. They actually managed to do the entire book series. You, you look at so many things that uh, tried and failed. Golden Compass. Dark Materials coming to HBO. Very curious to see about that adaptation. Do you ever see Golden Compass? Yes. Fascinating book series. And what sucks is that first one is like pretty good, but the next two books are, um, the next one is called, the the second book is called The Subtle Knife, and it is just, it is so, it is such dynamite young adult fiction. Yeah. And Golden Compass just tanked, and they're like, oh well. And they're like, dude, it's like Narnia, man. Brad and I saw those just get better and better and then they stopped. Yeah, it was like, my, dude, The other example I was going to give was Narnia, you know, Prince like, you know, Caspian and yeah. Voyage of the Dawn Treader or whatever. Those were amazing. Yeah. Those were so fun. Yeah. Dude, there's like a castle siege <laughs> in one of those movies. It's either like two or three that is so sick. This like griffin airdrops like a minotaur down into a castle to smash through the <laughs> gates. And it was just like, movies. Yep. <laughs> So awesome. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, so apologies if we're not, you know, rattling off any of your favorite adaptations. Thank you for everybody in, this, in the comments. Just to add more, a couple more adaptations before we wrap things up. The show's running a little bit long. I want to talk to you. I want to tell you, and I'm curious what you think. If you have any guesses over what the top 10 highest grossing film adaptations are. Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings is certainly in there. Um, but uh, yeah. Harry Potter. Okay. Um, anything else come to mind? Alice in these are freaking Wonderland. Right? Wow. Do you just know that? You, I know, ch you check these numbers a lot, so you just know that that made a lot of money? No, it because it's the most annoying making a lot of money movie ever. It's yeah. like, how does that subpar movie make over a billion dollars? Can we talk and, about Tim Burton for a hot second? Pacific Rim is like <laughs> struggling. Can we talk about Tim Burton for just a second? Sure. How Tim Burton does like Beetlejuice and Pat Ed Edward Scissor, no, not Batman, Edward Scissorhands, yeah. Beetlejuice, yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah. you know, uh, uh, even Frankenweenie, which was like a, uh, he finally got to do, but what was a, yeah, a story that he'd written at a very young age, um, and, and just how incredible and, uh, un you know, uh, unforgettable his, his original works are. And then now he's just like, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to adapt, you yeah. know, uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies Dumbo. we should talk about. I want to see it. Yeah, I hear. I hear there's enough to like about it. It's just like it's kind of you know, Midland. strange decisions. You know, just weird, 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 weird stuff. Yeah. What have, What do you think's going through Burton's mind? Just this idea of like, you know, but just ever since Batman, he's like, this is all I want to do now. I want to do Batman, yeah. then Batman Returns, and Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Wonderland Two, and I don't know enough um, about him, but if Planet if, of the Apes, like, like if so he, much weird stuff from him. Like if I was in, if I was Tim Burton or whatever, it, like if I all of a sudden got a bunch of money to make stuff, it's like, dude. I would start adapting which stuff is in an my excellent, own vision. Hey, like, which is an excellent question. Let me make a Last of Us movie. Sure, let's do this. An excellent question. <laughs> if you, uh, here, $10, $10 million. Yeah. $100 million. Make a movie? What, what, whatever you want to do, baby. Ooh. I, I believe, according to lore, Jason Siegel got this opportunity. And yeah. I think, uh, I, I, I believe in my heart that Jordan Peele got the same thing. Yeah. Where uh, Jason Siegel just blew up. He had some, I don't remember what the big movie was. Yeah. But they uh, they came to him and said, whatever you Knocked want. And he, and he said, The Muppets. And they were like, oh, really? And he was yeah. like, The Muppets, let's do it. And they were like, okay. Yeah. And so it was like, what a, oh, what an ass, <laughs> you know, to have this role. <laughs> Would be like, oh, thanks, Jim Henson. Do, 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 you yeah. know, uh, and I think I think uh, Jordan Peele got the same thing. I think Get Out was so huge that they were like, blank check, sky's Whatever. the limit. What do you want? He was like, yeah. Twilight Zone. They were like, Oh my God, yes, yes, let's do it. Like, I can imagine just like fifteen-year-old Jordan Peele being like, I want to do Twilight Zone. Yeah. So what? What would you do? I honestly don't know, John. Oh come on! Really I'm don't. disappointed in you. You can't think of anything. It doesn't have to be like the definitive. Because I, I, you, you already said it. You said uh, Last of Us, maybe. Yeah, yeah. but Last I just, I love, I love creators. You know, <laughs> I love experiencing the creators' works. That's like part of my passion. Is like I love sitting down in a movie theater mm -hmm. and like directed by Guillermo del Toro. I'm yeah. like, take me, take me to your world, Guillermo. Like, yeah. I live in my own world on a daily basis. It's like I love movies and stuff to be in yeah. other worlds so it's it's tough you know i just have so much passion for other people's work i want to do a three-part six-hour total final fantasy six series just three episodes there we go uh be fun it'd be great to shoot a live action i think it would probably be more cost effective ultimately yeah. at the end of the day to do it animated but um yeah you know what i, I would i would I have an answer definitively. I would give Resident Evil another crack. <laughs> you know, I would do Resident back. Evil. Yeah. Well, you, you know it's going to happen. You the know, match. You know it's going to happen. Yeah. You know they're going to reboot that baby yep. at some point down the road. Yeah. yeah. But I would do it so faithful. Spencer Mansion, oh, just like the Mo scariest. Monster Hunter's coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Monster yeah. Hunter's. Right around the corner. Scariest There's so many adaptations. I, I, and I, like, I don't necessarily want to make this uh, episode just us rattling off like a ton of things. Like I think it's, it's fun to leave that up to the... Um, to the uh, to the audience, but yeah. yes, you said uh, the Lord of the Rings: Return of the King is number two on this list. Yeah. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is number four, um, and uh, that's it for Lord of the Rings movies. Return of the King is the only one to break top ten, but two or three Harry Potters probably. All three Hobbit movies are in here. <laughs> what? Yeah, how do you like them apples? Because it's the setup. What in the Lord, the Lord of the Rings trilogy just teed it up. Yeah, and then they came in. Ian McKellen's like, oh, I'm doing it. And everyone was like, shut up and take my money. I'm, I'm, I'm back. Wow. 
Uh, and of course, Harry Potter. Uh, there's the, one other one that you're not f- forgetting. So you mentioned Alice in Wonderland. Do you think uh, the uh, the 3D 48 frame high frame rate had anything to do with it? Because no, it was man. no, it's Lord of the Rings. Okay. <laughs> it just okay. it was just uh, you know it was the, the same guy wrote the music, same yeah. people doing the costumes, yeah. same people did the special effects, totally. same director, same writer. It was every, it was they were like we're just we're we're, we're still going. Yeah. We're gonna do it in a third of the time, <laughs> but you know, uh, and to, you know take one book and blow it up into three. Should have been two movies. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't actually... Guillermo said he would have been two. Oh, shots fired. Uh, no, when he was doing it, he was like, yeah, oh, was that's right, gonna be... right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I um, I actually think six hours is is an okay time to tell the story of The Hobbit. It's still, it's still a book. There's still a lot going on. Dude, um, you watch all well, three extended hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Um, but uh, there is one franchise you have not mentioned, and I'm curious. We have talked about it on this episode that is in the top ten, and I'm stoked Does Batman count? to see it. Um, or Marvel? They're not in here. Okay. Neither one. Adaptations. I guess it's tough because, yeah, what I think this is, even though Elsa Wonderland, like, yeah, get off the list, but um, it is an ad. All of these are a, a, a book name. Like, got it's it. not just like, ah, oh, Captain Marvel. It's like, no, it's got it. Got fellowship. It, got it. it's, it's Return of the King, that book. So I think yeah. it's like a direct. So you say, like, Batman, it's like, well, that's not, it's based on a property. It's not based on a, yeah. an actual work. I don't know. Jurassic Park, number three. Jurassic Park. Feels good, right? Yeah, Still feels number good. three. Feels good. Still feels number three. Really good. Does, uh, that, does that counting the re-release? Because um, I'm pretty sure Avatar padded their numbers when they were re-released. Uh, Same with Titanic. The Avatar Titanic anger. was below two billion yeah. worldwide, and then they re-released. Dude, and now it's, I went to go see Titanic like, in 3D, cheating. and I couldn't see it. Like I couldn't see the 3D. I was like, I guess. <laughs> I literally couldn't. There was like no scene. I was like, whoa! You know, the whole time I'm like. I sure, guess. it's in 3D, I guess. I guess. Yeah, yeah, weird. Like, so strange. Uh, in order, uh, number 10, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Number nine, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. Number eight, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one. Number seven, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog. Number six, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Number five, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Four, Alice in Wonderland. Three, Jurassic Park. Two, Return of the King. And one, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. The most money anyone has ever made by taking an actual property and... And adapting it, um, hollows, dude. Yeah, oh, we did talk about Bond at all. Bond's really great. Uh, it's been in- interesting to read uh, some of those. I only read like a couple, but it is yeah. interesting to see Casino Royale. Casino Royale is a great example, and different. there are many. Yeah, you know, if you enjoyed that movie, like check out the David Niven weird Casino Royale, and yeah, there's just yeah, it's it's. Uh, we talk about themes. It's kind of interesting to how many ways you can approach Casino Royale. Oh, yeah. uh, Fear and Loathing is is uh, a hotly debated uh, mm-hmm. um, adaptation that like I don't think does the book justice but yeah. man is that an entertaining movie man are those two incredible performances that I could just yeah. watch again and Toby Maguire's in them it was so many random is actors is? yeah I don't remember that he's the guy they pick up on the side of the road oh my gosh he's like do I say that loud you know and he's like I'll see you guys later man and he runs away Toby Maguire awesome um, uh, yeah, very strange film. Um, but there we go. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna before we wrap up this episode, I'm gonna tell because we are talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah. I'm gonna a- answer any questions that Michael Huber has about adaptations or about some of my favorite scenes. Yeah. So I bid you adieu if you don't want to catch any Game of Thrones spoilers. Uh, that we are just hours, you know, uh, the counting the 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 hours until we get the final season of this incredible story and actually find out what in the holy hell happens to all of these characters. So thank you to everybody for watching. If you don't want spoilers, but if you do, they begin now. Spoilers start. Right now, let me have it. I like that Easy Allies is a spoiler-free safe haven. I just want to throw that out there. Sure. You know? Feels good. There's an, there's enough spoilers on the internet. Like, I want people to come to Easy Allies and feel secure knowing that we're going to try our damnedest to respect the integrity and the 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 passion of creators of sure. experiencing something I, I without like, it being spoiled. I like commenting on the struggle. You know, I like being kind of on the other side of that. Someone who's not too annoyed. Because again, like as a as a aspiring writer, as a, as a film major, like it's, as somebody who's been studying this for a long time, like I like to I like to know how it's made. I like, if course. I eat something nice, I like to know what ingredients went into it. Yeah. And so when I see spoilers, it's kind of like that. It's like letting me know like there's paprika in it before I eat it. Then I, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> if I know a character's going to die, then it's like, oh, I see what you're doing. It's like I save time. It's like I have the first and second viewing simultaneously, you know? And so that's why I appreciate that, but. Mm-hmm. Total sympathy for people that uh, for sure that don't like it. All right, Jones. The biggest thing I threw it out there earlier, Lady Stoneheart. Right. How disappointed or are, are, are you disappointed that we haven't gotten this critical 
storyline. I, 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 I have a, did a little info and I read a little yeah. bit about it, and I'm like, this sounds not only important from a plot point, right. but from like a philosophy standpoint. Yeah. Like, what I, are your thoughts? I, uh, well, I have a hot take. Okay. This is just my, because again, Gurm is so secretive. Mm-hmm. My super hot take is Gurm wasn't really sure what he was going to do with her. And that's like a big moment. It happens right at the end, right at the end. Like that's one of the last things that we know that happens in the books. Yeah. Uh, it leaves Brienne and Jamie in a, in a hell of a position, actually, which is also fascinating because they don't even get to that point in the. So it's you're like as book fans, we're like resolution, please, Gurm. We're curious at that how that scene ends. Yeah. Um, but uh, for those who do not know, uh, Catelyn Stark is not dead. Catelyn Stark, just like uh, dead, just like Beric Dondarrion, and just like all of the people that the the Red Priest, whose name. Escapes me. If you're familiar with the show, he's the guy that gets mauled by the 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 no, not Melisandre. He's the guy that brings Beric back. He's the guy that gets mauled by the bear in season seven. Thoros of Mir. Thoros of Mir. I love I love lore. Uh, (laughs) Thoros. And there's a lot of question. Even Melisandre when she brings John back is like, I honestly I'm not sure how the hell I did that. Like it's it's not a matter like this magic that we're conjuring is a living thing. So when they talk about the light, when they talk about the you know all all of these uh, the 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 light bringer, the sword. I can't remember if they call the sword Azur on high. Like um, all of this is is speculative because when they look into the fire, they don't know what they're going to see, and everyone sees something different, and they're not even sure what I'm looking at. Is this actually going to happen? You see Bran's journey, and Bran's like. He he knows now. Bran has all the answers, and he very rarely talks because he's like, "Where do I even start, man? There's so much to tell you. Like, I yeah. I know, you know, I've seen the past, the present, and the future simultaneously. Like, um, and so it's it's a big mystery, kind of how magic works in this world, how do dragons work? Why, you know, how, how, like uh, it's interesting. Actually, I bring this up now. There's a lot of that stuff because Danny, when she, you know, uh, cracks the dragon eggs, she doesn't. She didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like she's not exactly sure like how this stuff's going to play out. So there's a, there's a lot of that stuff happening. And that was another wink, uh, they wink. Dump, like they, when they call her Danny in the show. Finally, yeah, it's like why what? what? <laughs> Jon Snow calls her that. Yeah, like out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like hey, book readers. Yeah, yeah. we got gotcha. you. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they, the phrase after she's murdered at the Red Wedding, they dump her into the, the river that the, the Freys live on, the, the twins, which are these two towers across a bridge. They dump her in that river. She goes down the river and is found miraculously by the band whose name it I don't remember. That was initially sent by Ned. Uh, he initially uh, sent Brotherhood Beric, without uh, Beric Dondarrion to go do something. Long, to long go story. kill the mountain. Aha, he's on it. <laughs> He remembers. I love lore. Uh, it's good co-op. Good co-op and <laughs> remembering the story of this damn show. Uh, and they, they bring her out and they bring her back to life. Problem is, she got cut super deep, almost like half de- de- uh, uh, decapitated. And so she can't speak anymore. So she's just, blah, 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 blah. you know, and like, so there's a lot of gestures. There's a lot of like them kind of working on um, behalf of her. And then you get a sense that like they're now going to lead this charge on her behalf to whoop everybody's ass. Yeah. So wait, they bring her back? Thoros brings her back. Yes, and I don't okay. remember why they call her Lady Stoneheart. If they named her that, because she's not like, Lady like yeah. she can't say that, and so I don't know if that's like a nickname they give her. Yeah. Um, but uh, and she's like very shrouded. It's like a it's a very creepy moment in the book where you're like, who is that? And they describe her, and you're like, ooh, that chick sounds creepy. And then you're like, what? And nothing at all points to this at all. No rumors, everything. Yeah. A, a, a classic uh, literary spoiler that they love to to uh, tease in the books that we don't get that resolution in the books. We have gotten into the show now in season seven is Nymeria is uh, uh, Arya's wolf yeah yeah people talk about wolves all the time Did you hear about that crazy pack of wolves that's running around kicking ass yeah and they're like it's like some background conversation in King's Landing or something and you're like Nymeria yeah Sick. and so we've been waiting for that and the, the show didn't do that at all so that was something book readers when 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 like Arya's like in the forest and hears like a twig like huh and everyone was like <laughs> and how heartbreaking that they then separate yeah. again but it makes sense you know yep. it's like, ah, it's, yeah it's so it's so grueling so of course the, the worst people she could ever bump into the first people that Thoris and Beric and Lady Stoneheart bump into are Brienne and Jamie. Ugh. And she fucking hates Jamie because she still blames it now, knows, I know what you did. I know everything that your family did. String him up. And they just throw a noose over his neck and yoink. And then there's, she's like, Brienne too. And Brienne's like, but I've been the whole time. And I, you know, and by this point, she hasn't bumped into, she hasn't reunited with Sansa. She hasn't reunited with Arya. She has no idea what the hell happened to him. She still thinks the two people that Theon pretended to kill, that that happened, you know? Yeah. Like, she's so in the dark. And she's like pleading to Stoneheart. And Stoneheart's just like, bleh, bleh. you know? And they're like, all right. And they string her up and they yoink. Chapter ends. 
crazy. And that's the, but they do that all the time. Like yeah. the worst one was when uh, 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 Tyrion falls off the boat. Yeah. And you're like, no, Tyrion. That's a cha- it's the end of a chapter. It's yeah. like, and Tyrion fell deeper into the ocean, down, down, down. And you're like, no. And then in like the <laughs> next chapter, Tyrion's in. It's like, he's fine. And you're like, all right, Gurm, <laughs> God damn it. Like, <laughs> He loves doing that shit. Um, so yeah, I just think it was a hornet's nest. I just think they were like, uh, and Gurm was like, oh, I don't know. She kind of does stuff. And they were like, you know, and again, got to pay that actor to come back. Is it worth yeah. paying her to insert into a story when really we're looking at our blueprint already and it's like, I don't even see yeah. where she fits in or how necessary she would be, do which you, makes me wonder how necessary she actually is in, the, in book six and book seven. Do you think there is time to put her in the final season, and if they do, would it do it justice? Uh, or is what, it too late? What would be interesting is if that happened, because like it could have happened. Like He could have brought her back and she could have gone with someone else or something. She could yeah. be like wandering around. Um, uh, there are ways to maybe insert it in the story. It'd be interesting. I'm curious how many like quick brand cuts we get in season eight of brand just being like, uh, like in a Doctor Strange kind of way. Yeah. And you just like see images of things and maybe one is like a woman in a veil and then you see like a little scar. And you're like, oh, you know? And so like fans of the show were like, oh, some weird nightmare sequence. And fans of the books are like, okay. That's so at cool. least at least they're 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 referencing that like maybe something happened or that'd be a great way. Maybe to maybe he's seeing into her mind just kind of how she imagined her revenge or maybe that yeah. was like he sees other dimensions and that was in one dimension and it happened or something like last question but yeah the, the when we did predictions the brand predictions are like near impossible to make because yeah. it's like Who there's knows? so many possibilities of what he can do Damiani's got a good one of course do you think uh last question do you think any deceased characters will be <laughs> white walkers <laughs> um no, well, I mean, they're, they're uh, like like everyone, you know, like they're 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 parading through right now, and that could be a big reveal at the end of a, of an episode, or they just stop by a cemetery and just, you know, like, and all of you, you know, so like, who knows, you know, like, uh, like Thor, any Thor Ragnarok style, yeah, I'm talking like main, like a like a again, we're spoilers here. Like a like a Sean Bean or yeah, like, a like Stannis Ned, or like something. Ned would be Ned would be rough because there was, yeah. uh, I mean his he's fits in a you know like a backpack now so like there's not a whole lot to there was like a, that was a big deal oh, yeah, when they finally was... got his remains back um yeah because so probably not ned yeah, uh not ned. and bringing back um renly would be interesting yeah uh renly was buried in, in pretty good condition yeah um uh it'd be interesting if oh no or like oh. a negrete or whatever oh, no, dude john snow caesar and is just like oh regret oh, yeah yeah no. Uh, no, the best, the absolute best. I and I take this back. I said in my predictions that uh, um, I think uh, Jamie's going to kill Cersei. Her kids, all the kids come back. <laughs> Tommen, Tommen, dude, like zombie Tommen, Tommen, dude. <laughs> and they all literally just with little tiny knives. Just <laughs> that would be fascinating. All the kids, because she's kind of whatever about it. Like she actually saw the you know that this this magic exists and was like. I'm going to use this to, for my own means. Wah, ha, ha, ha. And you're like, yeah. I don't think you're really, <laughs> Jamie's yeah, like, grasping, yeah, yeah, understanding kind of the stakes yeah. of what's going on here. Yeah. And she's like, no, they're going to wipe out all my enemies. It's great. He's yeah. like, okay. Seriously, just wants to live in a world where it's just her. Yeah. She basically wants, she wants everyone in the world to just die. Yeah. So she can just, just hang out. I live in my castle. Yeah. And everyone, did, everyone but the people who bring me food. Yeah. Basically, can you just die, yep. please? <laughs> But uh, anything else before we wrap it up, before I tell you my favorite scene in the books. That's was it. unfortunately not in the show. Uh, my ba- favorite scene in the books is featuring a character who is now dead, and it sucked because he got stabbed in a back alley and died, Ugh, even though he was he was lifted up to be just this incredible warrior, and he was. Uh, and it was fascinating in the books when he be- started following uh, Daenerys, and that's uh, Bears in the Bold. And it was interesting, too, because... Uh, uh, um, Joffrey, like, you know, disrespects him. Basically, he's just like, why do I care? Love that and he's scene. like, I've been around for so much longer. I've been scene. alive for like four of your lifetimes, you little punk. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, even less in the books because like all the characters are younger. And he's just like, how dare you? Like, yeah. you, you know who you're talking to, man? Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing about Game of Thrones. It's like, even that, now I could cut you down. That, like rarely, a cake. that rarely holds water. So like, that's big. proven to just not matter at all. Like, who you are, what your status is. I don't, I don't care. Like, that only matters as far as you can throw me, basically. As far as you can, you know, uh, 
get b- bannermen together to, to fight me or, you know, like have some kind of knowledge that I don't have a piece of information that I need or, or something. Yeah. Um, and Bearson gets booted out and then it picked up, gets picked up by Daenerys. And in the books, um, I think he dies before she leaves in the books where he's around because there's this huge, uh, again, time. There's this big gap that we are still experiencing in the books. Where In the books, Daenerys is gone. She got on Drogon and took off. Oh, when she goes to see and, the, um, when she gets she, picked up by when the, she finds the 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 Kalisar. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, and so she and I think she meets him. I think she's like on a on a hilltop, like whoop. And then the Kalisar walks up, and she's like, oh shit. And then that's it. That's like how, wh- wh- how we've left Daenerys in the books. Yeah. And uh, but everybody else that was back home, like uh, and Tyrion hasn't joined that group yet. So when they're all speculating what to do while she's gone, she has not met Tyrion. She's out, you know, and Tyrion's still like, you know, like, uh, um, uh, in a box. he's close. He's in Essos. <laughs> like he's, he's near her, but they haven't like had this meeting, which they've like very much rushed that on the show. And so it's really um, uh, Jorah Mormont and Barristan the Bold. They're like, what the hell are we going to do? And they have a whole interesting relationship as well. And she decides to marry, and I don't think this happens on the show, his daughter Zolorek. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is in Marine, and he turns out to be the head of the Sons of the Harpy, which I also mm-hmm. don't remember if that's revealed on the show. I think so it there is. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so she marries him as for for because uh, again, it's like her, you know, uh, Daenerys' whole journey is she just kind of started as this blank slate, very much unlike Sansa, who was bred to be, you know, she was she was bred to just be married to somebody. So she's like didn't learn anything about policy or politics or war, and so she keeps making mistakes. Um, uh, whether they're justifiable or not, and then learning from them and being like, okay. And so there's actually a pretty smart decision politically to marry this guy because she can't just run around pissing everybody off all the time. She's like, I have to, you know, I have to reach across the table every now and then. Uh, and so she decides to marry. Had no idea that he's in charge of the Sons of the Harpy. And Barristan finds out. And Barristan's like, okay. <laughs> he's like, this is her husband. And I think that she would be okay with me doing this decision, knowing what I know, but she's not around. And, uh, and it's been a long time since I read the book, so I apologize if I'm paraphrasing this a little bit. But, uh, uh, and, but he's like, but even if I make this decision and I go arrest him, and how often do people get arrested in Westeros? Like, how often do people actually, <laughs> does someone come in and like put handcuffs on someone yeah. and take them to jail? Yeah. You know, it's like, it always ends bloody. It's always in a back alley. It's always people are poisoned or decapitated or, yeah. or you, know, uh, you know, beheaded in public. And um, and so he's just like, you know what? Fuck it. And he just like waltzes into his room in his armor and is like, you're under arrest. And his daughter's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I know you are I know you lead the sons of the harpy. I know you've betrayed Daenerys. You've ruined the lives of all of these people. Uh, I'm taking you in right now, me, by myself. And his daughter's like, mwah, and he backs up classic like ads, you know, come in MMO yeah. style. And this other dude comes in and he's like, it's it's this interesting clash of styles where like he comes in, you know, uh, Barrett and Dar- uh, Barrett and the Bull comes in full armor and his old classic armor. Yeah. And because uh, he was in uh, Knight of the Kingsguard. And some guy comes out who has this one of these really sharp, badass blades that's all jagged along the edge. And he's like, got this crazy style. Yeah. And he comes in and he's like, he's like, oh, you're not going to get to his dar. And Barrison's like completely unshaken. And he's like, I'm going to kill you right now. And I'm going to arrest your master and I'm going to take him to jail. It's your decision right now whether you want to die or not. And he's not like, I'm going to kill you. He's just very cool and calculated. And yeah. he's like, I know so I can badass. I know I can do this. I know it's my ability. I see the weapon you have. I see the weapon that I have. I see the stance of this fight. I'm going to win this fight. There's no question. So what I suggest you do if you don't want to die is just step aside and let me go arrest him. And the guy's like, no, we're going to fight. And he's like, okay. And they, they fight. And there's this one moment where he gets a good uh, st- uh, jab in on Barristan and hits his armor. Yeah. And it just boink, like bounces like off his armor. Like Jorah fight. And the guy backs away and tells Barristan, like, that's not fair. Like, you take that armor off and we'll fight like men. And Barristan's like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to kill you and yeah. I'm going to arrest him. Yeah. And he's like, no. Nah! And Barristan kills him. And then arrests his star <laughs> so Zolarek Zol- awesome. and puts him in prison. And I like, literally, it was like the whole. I mean, if we really want to get into spoilers, the only yeah. thing that's matched that on the show is is the death of Littlefinger. Is is when you know Littlefinger getting his throat opened by yeah. Arya. You know, like uh, of that moment where it's like, finally, thank you, thank you. <laughs> like, yes. finally some comeuppance. My yeah. God, yeah. like finally something that deserved to happen actually happened. Yeah. Ugh, because just everything else. 
again, it's just you fi- I finally hit that pool of water in the middle of the desert. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, and that moment is so great because of it's the three kids. It's it's Bran and Arya and Sansa coming together and being like, never again, never again is someone gonna get in between me and my family because that's all I have left. And I was just like, <clears throat> so epic. I had a couple of people that weren't a fan of that because they thought Littlefinger kind of waltzed into it, and I was like, no man, that was his last card. Yeah, that was the last the last thing that he had. The last thing he was willing to fight for, other than ruling and manipulating everybody, yeah. was his love of Sansa. Yep. And oops, <laughs> you, you uh, stretched that a little too thin yeah. there, buddy. Oh boy! It's like there eventually, you go. eventually, you're gonna get caught. There's some spoilers, you know. Yeah, but um, but yeah, adaptations are fun. Thank you so much for having this uh, elongated. I know I'm hosting this, and so I stretched it out to about two hours, but. Uh, um, it was very fun to talk about this. Uh, Ian Hink will return at a future episode. The next episode might be, you know, you and I as well. Yep. You don't necessarily know the schedule, nope. and you might be hosting the next one. But yep. uh, give me a microphone. Ask me to talk about movies, and I'll do it. Thanks, Huber. Thanks when's everybody the, for watching. Uh, when's the full Game of Thrones spoiler mode, Jones? In six weeks or whatever. Like yeah, whenever, whenever it's it all ends. done. It sucks because some people are asking for doing it. And we set a precedent at Game Trailers. We had Game Trailers of Thrones. Back at Game every Trailers, episode. we did every episode. And um, that, my, my job was very different back yeah. in those days. I could just work on that, and that we was it. We should do, like, um, two episodes then. We do one at the halfway point. That'd be fun. Maybe. After episode we'll three. We'll see. We'll see how much we have to I'll talk try. about. I'll try. But it was, even, even at Game Trailers, my bosses were like, yeah, do we need this Game Trailers of Thrones show? And I was like, just please, we really have a fun time doing it. And it was nice, again, having Miguel and, and Hoffman and these guys yeah. were just such, like, oh, Stevens were just like such, you know, fonts of, of information, you know, yeah. to go to for the books, even though I had read them. Um, but, because, uh, yeah, we're always just like, you brought up a couple names. So I'm like, who, you yeah. know, a lot of people, a lot going on. There's yeah. a lot to wrap up. Um, but uh, yeah, curious about all your opinions too. You can send them to me. Again, I'm not frequently on the show, but you can follow me at Trailer Jones and let me know what you thought about this. Again, keep those spoilers light as always. Keep but, them uh, light. We will see you in the next episode of Reaction Shots. Mm-hmm.